Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto is brutal in the Chunin exams. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by They Call Me Savior and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. Naruto rubbed his aching head as he came to, climbing to his feet shakily, what happened? He grunted in pain as his head stung. Then the memory came back to him, distorted by a distinct crimson haze. Um, the grass shinobi mused quietly, Naruto in her grasp. It seems the Kaiubi brat is still alive. She then opened his orange jacket and rolled up his shirt. The grass Kanoichi was amused at what she saw, on the boy's stomach was an intricate seal on the boy's stomach, so this is the seal. The Kusagakur Kanoichi moved her right hand behind herself, a mini purple fire lighting up on each fingertip. Naruto thrashed in her grasp, trying desperately to free himself. The ninja's amazingly long tongue, however, would not relinquish him from its grasp. Hey! He shouted, wriggling as much as the foreign appendage would allow. Let me go. A super powerful grass ninja, who was actually Orochimaru in disguise, thrust his flaming fingers into Naruto's unprotected abdomen, crying, Gaju Fuin. Naruto's face contorted into a silent scream as the Hibi Senin's agile digits dug into his stomach, clenching around the soft flesh. The red bled from his eyes as the Kikbi's chakra disappeared, returning his eyes to their natural blue. His canine teeth shrunk to their original size, and his nails were once more blunt and soft. Then, without warning, the blonde boy slumped, unconscious. As the grass Kanoichi tossed him into the depth of the abyss, all Naruto heard was a scream. Erg. Naruto gripped his head as white chakra started to form around him. Its energy sizzled, crackled like food under the stove. The white energy hissed upon bodily contact, causing Naruto great pain. He screamed when memories suddenly flashed once more. For a brief second he saw a red-haired woman being held by a blonde-haired man. Naruto a feminine voice echoed his mind. My Naruto don't be a fussy eater eat a lot and grow up to be a big boy. Go to bed early and sleep well, take your bath every day. The voice coughed. She sounded like she was in pain make friends, it doesn't matter how many. Just make sure they're real friends people you can trust even a few is enough. And study your ninjutsu I was never good at it, maybe you will be. Everyone has things they are good at and things they are not. So don't feel bad if you can't do it all. Make sure you listen to the teachers at the academy. Naruto's head continued to spin as he kept screaming. The white chakra whirled around him and began to sprout tails 1 2 3. And remember avoid the three vices of the shinobi don't borrow money if you can help it. Save what you earn from missions. No drinking alcohol until you're 20 and don't overdo it or you'll ruin your body. 4 5 6 tails. The agony continued. And as for women, well I'm a woman so I don't know what to say, but there are only men and women in this world and you'll want a girlfriend someday. Just try not to pick a weird one, try to find someone like your mother. The man spoke now another warning watch out for Jureya sensei. The voices grunted, but the female voice again spoke this time was very sad. Naruto you are going to experience a lot of pain and suffering, flashes came. People scowling at him, there was anger, sadness, freak, monster, mom said I can't play with you, he's that boy, demon, remember who you are, find a goal, a dream and don't stop trying until it comes true. The female voice spoke again bring forth another memory. I want to be Hokage. The greatest of them all Naruto yelled standing in front of the class. Everyone soon laughed at him. Like you can be, Doba boy with a dog in his head insulted you failed twice now. Yeah and Naruto Baka. A pink haired girl yelled when everyone now threw insults at him. One word was the most consistent of them all. Dope. There there's so much more I want to say to teach you about I want to stay with you. I love you my baby. Weeping can be heard as Naruto felt great sorrow, the woman was crying. I'm sorry Minato. I took all your time she said when the male voice entered now. It's okay, Naruto this is your dad. Listen to your motor mouth mother. I want you to be the greatest ninja ever. Naruto let out an ear splitting scream. The pain was unbearable. Seven eight nine tails finally complete. Eight trigram seal. Both the female and male yelled. Arg. Naruto fell to his knees and became unconscious what he didn't know was that he stood before the seal. The white chakra surged into the cage and two red slitted eyes opened. It spoke I am complete. Erg, Naruto groaned softly, the splashing water waking him. He looked around, his expression a bit dazed still, where? A sower is what he saw, pipes that leaked a bit hit the water creating dripping sound. He looked around and was surprised to see a huge cage before him. The cage Naruto said still confused to where he was where am I? Last thing he remembered, he'd been in the forest of death during the second part of the Chunin selection exams, and he had fraught against a strong Kusagakur ninja. He had been surrounded by trees and roots and then darkness. So where was he now? The only place that had sowers was the Kanoha sowers he used to venture to when he was little. This is no ordinary sower and this cage, the blonde thought as he looked at the cage a cage. 
He walked to the cage and touched the bars. So, a deep voice, like the rolling thunder, spoke. Nearly jumping out of his skin, he suddenly froze, coming face to face with a crimson fox. You're finally here. Its fur was like fire, wild and uncontrolled. Nine flames appeared behind the beast. Uzumaki Naruto began to tremble, but his feet refused to move. It is nice to meet my jailer the fox spoke, its voice brought shivers to his spine. Naruto felt its hot breath making him sweat. Tell me do you know who I am, the fox moved closer, its glowing red eyes boring into his own, can you say it with that tiny mouth of yours? Hey Kayubi Naruto stammered this was true fear he felt. The fox chuckled coo, coo coo coo. Naruto took a step back when suddenly claws attacked the bars. The massive claws stopped Naruto in his tracks as they tore his clothes, like knives tearing through his skin. The Yuzumaki screamed in pain. With eyes closed and fear overcoming him, he screamed your name is Kurama. The Kaiubi's eyes went wide in great surprise when suddenly light escaped the seal and a ball smacked the blonde Yuzumaki on the head. Naruto fell backwards. He groaned when he felt something on his lap. He looked and saw a beautiful glowing orb. Kaiubi chuckled you are not stupid after all. It seemed that the brat too went through the process. W what do you want and why am I here? Naruto asked suddenly huge back and be heard as fires came rushing towards him but enwrapped the bars of the seal. I am the Kaiubi and you are in the seal the fox spoke its eyes studying the blonde like a specimen under the microscope. Seal. Naruto moved away from the fox fearing he would lash out at him. So the snake woman sent me here. Harshly, the Kaiubi spoke I sent you here. Naruto was surprised, but his surprise came through a croaked voice wy. It is not your concern the fox said. Wah what do you mean Naruto got up now holding the orb in his hand, why did you send me here? The orb glowed and the fox slanted its eyes a bit the seal is complete. What Naruto blinked the seal, you mean the 8 trigram seal. Yes, the seal is fully complete. The Kaiubi said what was lost has been found. What was lost Naruto said and thought you mean you lost something Kaiubi chuckled, its damn chuckle always made him shiver. Indeed, it smirked. But it appears I wasn't the only one. What do you mean Naruto asked, but the fox spoke now is not the time. Wake up. Eyes wide open Naruto woke with a gasp, his head aching and his stomach sore. It felt as though he'd been run through with a katana to the heart. Bedding up he heard he looked around to see Team 10, 7 and another team. Here wake Naruto, Chaoji spoke getting his attention as did everyone. Naruto Baka. Sakura yelled as he saw her with Ino it seemed she was done getting her hair done. Naruto just ignored everything and held his face. What is this feeling he thought, he felt more spiritually aware, like an empty void inside him was filled. What was lost has been found what Kaiubi said rung through his mind. Mendix, troublesome, that fight was a waste of time. Shikamaru groaned as he sat next to Chaoji who opened a bag of chips and began to inhale them. Don't be like that Shikamaru we won. Chaoji offered positively between bites. Yeah, you're right Chaoji. It's just too troublesome to think about, Shikamaru replied as he leaned back to look at the clouds. Niji stood up to the side as he watched Tenten wake their teammate Lee up while keeping a discreet watch on Ichiha Sasuke. Sasuke sat under a nearby tree by himself just reflecting on this latest development. That power, I felt that nothing could beat me, it felt great Sasuke thought as he remembered what happened not too long ago, however he looked at Naruto who also was in deep thought. We got the scroll. Let's go Sasuke said now getting up. This alerted Sakura who also got up. Naruto remained still. There are still plenty of teams out there who could easily beat us separately, Ino pointed out as she looked at everyone else in the clearing. Yosh. We can all make it through with the combined might of our youth. Lee all but shouted as he gave his nice guy pose, before Tenton clocked him with a fist to the back of the head and pulled him down to sit and be quiet. Need I to remind you we are enemies for the remainder of this part of the exam, so teaming up wouldn't be wise. Let's go Lee, Tenton Niji ordered Tenton nodded and got up Lee did the same they left now. Troublesome but we have both our scrolls, Shikamaru got up let's go. Chaoji and Ino nodded as the Ino Shikacho trio left. HRN Sasu grunted and walked off. Naruto he called out to his teammate. A Naruto snapping out of his thoughts. We're going, Sasu ordered as Sakura followed. Naruto just got up and went with them. The other team followed. Junin exam forest of death tower. I suggest we open the scrolls, Naruto said. After three hours of non-stop running, team seven had finally made it to the tower. They were now deciding what to do. Idiot. Sakura punched Naruto over the head, a vein popping out on her brow. Anko-san said not to open the scrolls. We'd get disqualified. She was talking about before we got to the tower. Naruto shouted back, rubbing his head. Besides, we would probably still be looking for a second scroll if it wasn't for me remember the decoy scroll. I don't care. Sakura fumed, glaring at him. I'm not about to let you and your stupidity get Sasuke-kun disqualified from the Chunin exams. Stupidity it's common sense. Naruto argued, blue eyes burning. We're in the tower now. The only explanation is that the scrolls have something to do with our qualification into the next part of the exams. 
Silence ensued as both Sasuke and Sakura were greatly surprised. That really made sense. Baka. Sakura hissed since when do you have common sense? I won't allow you to mess this up. Then what do you propose? He said seriously. Come on tell us. Sasuke looked at her, and Sakura now was intimidated a bit as she was put into a spot. Well I, we just move forward she sputtered having no idea. Where, we are in the tower, Naruto asked. Where do we go? We just move forward. Sakura snapped at him. Jeez. Naruto flung his hands up in exasperation, rolling his eyes. For the smartest girl in the academy you sure are pretty dumb. What did you say? Sakura's voice rose. I dare you to say that to my face. You heard, Naruto yelled back looking at Sakura like she was the stupidest woman in the world, Baka. How dare you? Sakura was about to hit Naruto again when Sasuke spoke. Hey, guys, both of them froze as Sasuke looked at them with his serious face. I think we should open the scrolls. Naruto now sighed as Sakura squealed and droned about how writer Sasuke-kun was and about how he always had the best ideas. Wasn't it his idea? Yeah and Naruto Baka. A pink-haired girl yelled when everyone now threw insults at him. One word was the most consistent of them all. Sakura-chan. Naruto froze with his head down, the shadows covering his eyes. Bakaha he said to himself eerily Sakura why did I even like her anyway? It didn't make sense. Come on, Baka. Sakura pulled him by the sleeve of his jacket, shoving the heaven scroll into his stomach forcefully. Help me open the scrolls. Grudgingly peeling open the scroll given to him, he stared at its contents. Several characters were written down, focused around single kanji in the center, the scrolls began to bring out smoke. Sakura let go of the scroll Sakura quickly listened oblivious of the way Naruto called her name. The scrolls were hurled at the floor as it rolled away from them. The smoke rose to cover the as the smoke began to clear, a shape could be seen within the dispersing cloud. Team 7 tensed but was surprised at who it was. Aruka sensei Sakura yelled. The person that came was the academy teacher, Yamino Aruka. He grinned at them, waving in a friendly manner, hey, guys. It's been a while, huh? Aruka sensei Naruto said in a quiet voice. Memories flashed. Get out Naruto Aruka was scowling you have been disrupting the class. But I didn't do anything. Young Naruto groaned. Get out. Aruka yelled. It's been a while Naruto Aruka smiled his hand landed on his hair softly began to ruffle it. Naruto flinched at the touch and suddenly slapped the hand away. Don't touch me. He hissed, eyes gleaming dangerously much to the shock of Aruka. Baka. Sakura came and bonked his head don't do that to your sensei. Naruto had his head down. He couldn't understand where these memories were coming from or why he was acting the way he was. I am complete. But it appears I wasn't the only one. The Kaiubi knew something. Naruto. Sakura yelled getting him out of his thoughts. Ah he smiled scratching the back of his head exactly the way he used to do sorry Aruka sensei. Aruka was deep in thought. He was confused. This wasn't the Naruto he knew. Sensei can you explain our next task? Sasuke spoke. Oh, right, Aruka rubbed the back of his neck, I am here to tell you all you have passed the second exam, Team 7 was surprised. Really? Sakura asked. Yes Aruka smiled now is the third exam. You guys don't overdo it okay he looked at Naruto especially you Naruto. Don't worry about me, it's not your job, it's mine he said suddenly surprising the teacher. He grinned, rubbing his neck sheepishly, yeah, I guess so, huh? Aruka was beginning to worry. What happened to Naruto? Let's go, Sasuke said walking off, yeah. Sakura yelled following Naruto went after them until Aruka stopped him with a hand on his shoulder. Naruto did something happened in the forest. He asked a bit worried. With his back turned to his sensei, he shrugged the hand off his shoulder. He walked off completely ignoring a shocked Aruka. All Aruka heard was a dead voice laced with traces sadness and confusion. I am complete. The Hokage looked over the assembled genin, resisting the overwhelming compulsion to smile when he saw Naruto among them. Twenty-one had made it, the majority of them from his village. They were all rookies, and another three were a team that was only about a year old. It warmed his heart to see such strength and courage in one so young. But the Sandium stood a group of Chunin, Jonin. Protruding from the front wall was a pair of stone hands forming the seal for Ram. Anko smirked at them from where she stood, congratulations on passing. Hokage-sama will now explain the third test, so listen carefully. Saratobi looked at the candidates and was impressed with his ninjas, he coughed and then spoke well done everyone for passing this portion of the exams. I will explain to you why you are here and what you shall be doing, but before I explain the third and final test for the day. Do you know the reason why the Chunin exams are held? The Genins looked confused as they listened. Gara just watched emotionlessly and Naruto watched with a serious expression. The Chunin exams are not here for a shinobi to go up just in rank. The truth is it's a replacement for war among allied countries, the Genins were getting more confused as Saratobi spoke. The village's strength is determined by the strength of its shinobi. By holding the Chunin exams, you have the opportunity to stand out and show feudal lords what you can do. 
Also, the strength you show will attract new clients. He was about to continue the third exam when Hayde interrupted as he coughed Hokage-sama, may I? Saratobi nodded, you may after all you are in charge of the third test. The chronic coughing caught the genin's attention. Was he sick? My name is Jack Mahade, and I'm the proctor of the third exams he coughed again and spoke the third test is to cut down the number of candidates as too many have passed. So we are going to do preliminary matches. This shocked everyone as they thought it was unfair. The feudal lords will be attending the final exams and we need the strongest ninjas available when they arrive. So this test will bring forth those who are the strongest between you all, Hayde answered their questions before they had to ask. So Wigara was about to speak, but Naruto finished for him, fight. Damari and Kankura looked at him in shock. He interrupted Gara. Everyone's eyes fell onto Naruto, but he ignored all of them, choosing instead to meet the Sandium's gaze. Suratobi eyed Naruto carefully. Hey, nodded that's correct. So before I start does anyone want to quit now? Silence ensued. Naruto noticed Sakura and Sasuke were speaking silently and listened in. I'm fine Sakura Sasuke said dangerously I won't quit, but that mark she was worried. Mark Naruto thought, taking note. Just worry about yourself. Sakura had no choice but to obey. Anyone else want to quit? Hayde asked again. Sakura looked at Sasuke and softened. She relented. Sorry I quit someone smiled. Kabuto-san. Sakura spoke in shock. Kabuto looked at Sakura and smiled I'm injured all over. So you see I'm not fit to fight. He smiled at them but looked at Naruto. When their eyes met, Naruto's eyes narrowed as Kabuto walked off. The Jounins and the Hokage noticed at how Naruto looked and pondered what changed in him. Alright the rules are as follows. As the referee you listen to me. If I say stop you stop. If you don't do that then you fail. Fights will be one on one and the winner fight will proceed to the final. Your opponents will be chosen at random and the match will end when an opponent dies, loses consciousness or gives up. If I see that a match is unable to continue I will also end the match. Alright now let's begin the first round. Everyone turned around to look at the screen as multiple names popped up before stopping at the first two names. Ichiha Sasuke vs Akadu Yoroi. Naruto just looked well Sakura looked scared Sasuke kun. Bakashi watched his prized student as he knew what happened and what the boy was carrying on his neck. He was told along with the Jounins that Orochimaru had attacked Team 7. As the Jounins moved out of the way, Kakashi touched Sasuke's shoulder. Remember Sasuke don't use the Sharingan he muttered. I know Sasuke nodded. Once everyone went up the stairs to watch the fight both opponents stood facing each other. Are both fighters ready? Hayate asked as he received a nod from both Yoroi and Sasuke Hajim. As soon the fight begun Yoroi started to go through several hand signs and his hands glowed blue. Sasuke flashed his Sharingan, but then suddenly he started to feel pain coursing through his neck, making him fall to the ground. Shit it's the sea Lanko muttered as she wanted to stop the fight, but her leader disapproved. She touched her mark remembering the event and how she met Orochimaru in the forest. Yes Sasuke Kun let it control you Orochimaru thought with a happy expression while he was in his disguise. Once that happened the fight became one-sided as Sasuke was getting beaten easily as those glowing hands of Yorwei kept draining his chakra. Yorwei had Sasuke's head on the floor and kept draining his chakra. Sakura was worried as she clenched her heart and looked away. Bakashi watched with full concentration as Sasuke got out of the man's hold and gained some space. He then dodged Yorwei's swings and then at a fast speed Sasuke appeared under him and then did an upward kick on his chin a technique that belonged to Lee. Both Lee and Guy's eyes widened as they recognized the technique. Neither were happy that Sasuke copied a comrade's technique with his Sharingan. Lions barrage. Winner Ichiha Sasuke. Hayate announced. Most of the Leaf contingency was amazed at Sasuke's skill. Wow Sasuke Kun is great. Ino commended happily, while Sakura sighed in delight. Bakashi was impressed while Asuma nodded. He was the rookie of the year, Kurinai nodded. Bakashi nodded while Guy frowned both thinking of different things. Lee looked sad, but Guy reassured him making him smile and begin another youthful rant. Naruto just gave the spandex-wearing youth a look of sympathy. He must have copied it from Guy's student he thought. So that's the Achiha. Kankuro looked impressed as he stood from the other platform opposite from Naruto and Ko. Ara looked unimpressed while Tamari agreed with Kankuro. The sound team just watched just watched from afar. While Yoroi was being pulled away on a stretcher, Sasuke still had problems getting up due to the seal on his neck. Orochimaru gave a gleeful look from behind his disguise until he saw Kakashi shunshin down and take the Achiha away. Everyone watched while Naruto looked at Sakura what's with him. Sakura looked shaken as she ignored him. And nothing. Kakashi sensei told me not to tell you anything Naruto. Just worry about your match Sakura frowned. Whatever Naruto frowned. So that's how it is if they wanted to keep secrets from him, it showed him that they couldn't be trusted. Where are they going? Ino inquired while Shikamaru looked at them deep in thought. Alright I shall now begin the second round Hey, coughed again as the screen changed until two new names appeared. Tenten versus Tamari. Yashiko Tenten. 
Lee perked up as he cheered for his teammate as Guy joined in. Niji nodded as Tenten smirked and came down the stairs where Tamari was waiting. The blonde flipped over the edge of the platform and jumped down. HMPH the girl won't stand a chance, Kankuro smirked. So that's the San team, Kurinai said as Asuma nodded. Tenten Naruto muttered watching the genin. Naruto Baka, you're a loser. She smirked you're not fit to be a ninja and never will be. His eyes narrowed. He looked at the sand ninja who was smirking. Never before had Naruto wished harm to come to another fellow leaf genin. But right now, he really wanted Tenten to take a real beating. He wasn't sure if that was a good or bad thing. So are you ready little girl Tamari smirked while Tenten took out a kunai and twirled you are going to pay for that comment. When the fight started Naruto was right because it was the most one-sided fight he had ever seen since well ever. Tamari's wind manipulation in conjunction with her fan made all of her long-range weapon usage futile. Naruto couldn't deny that he felt some satisfaction from the weapon mistress's defeat. Tamari smirked are you really a Kinoichi? It felt like fighting a child Lee wanted to retaliate, but Guy stopped him stop Lee. This is an exam it's the rules you know that. Lee just gritted his teeth in anger. The third Hokage looked impressed the shinobis from San are well trained. Anko and Ibiki nodded as they too was impressed. Tamari scanned the crowd until her eyes met Naruto's. She smiled and he smiled back. Suddenly Kakashi appeared on the platform and greeted everyone Kakashi sensei how is Sasuke kun? Kakashi gave her an eye smile don't worry Sakura, he will be fine. Sakura had a downcast expression okay sensei. Naruto watched with a stoic expression as Kakashi looked at him and smiled. Naruto just ignored him and looked towards the screen. Hey, he coughed for a bit as he commenced the next round, now let's begin the next round the screen flashed as it landed on two people. In Yuzuka Kiba vs Uzumaki Naruto, ha! The dope. We got lucky, Akamaru. Kiba gloated, jumping down into the arena. Akamaru, his dog, gave an enthusiastic bark of agreement. Naruto froze. I want to be Hokage. The greatest of them all Naruto yelled standing in front of the class. Everyone laughed at him. Like you can be dope a boy with a dog in his head insulted. It was Kiba you failed twice now. Naruto felt anger rise up when another voice entered his thoughts. Naruto this is your dad. Listen to your motor mouth mother. I want you to be the greatest ninja ever. Naruto kun Hinata looked at him, but his hair covered his expression. Naruto ignored her and walked down the stairs. The greatest ever he muttered to himself but no one heard. Naruto now stood before Kiba as hate stood between them. Ha! Eh, Kiba clenched his fist. I feel bad for you, so I lend this in one punch. Can you Naruto muttered can that actually be done? Yup Kiba smirked smugly against a dope like you anything's possible. Dope huh? Naruto smirked. Up in the stands, Yugi Kurinai, Kiba's teacher, smirked at Hada Kakashi, looks like your student doesn't belong in this exam, Kakashi-san. Kiba will finish him. Ma Kakashi scratched the back of his head, let us see shall we. Naruto is surprising after all. Hey 8 looked at Naruto and Kiba are you both ready? Naruto unzipped his orange jacket, took it off and threw it away to the side. This one will be faster than Tenten's he said seriously getting everyone's attentions. Tamari raised her eyebrow. That's unyouthful. Lee yelled when Naruto insulted his teammate. Lee guy chided looking towards Naruto. The Tejutsu specialist saw something in the blonde's eye but couldn't pinpoint what. Ha. Kiba smirked I won't even need Akamaru to beat you dope. Naruto didn't respond. Inuzuka Kiba, genin rank ninja, and the heir of the Inuzuka clan known for their nin dogs, Naruto thought his eyes narrowed. Begin. Hey, began, and with that, Kiba charged in for a head-on assault, fist cocking backwards. Meaning without their dogs as Kiba came closer and closer, time seemed to move slower and slower for Naruto. They are nothing. At the last second, Naruto caught Kiba's fist his left hand. Silence ensued. Then in one fluid motion, the blonde took a step towards Kiba, cocked his right elbow back, and slammed it into Kiba's own right elbow joint. A sickening crack was heard as the Inuzuka's arm was literally bent in two the wrong way. The collective gasps of the audience were drowned out by Kiba's blood-curdling scream as he dropped to his knees. Naruto finally let go of Kiba's limp arm before giving him a vicious roundhouse kick to the face. The last few seconds didn't actually register in his mind until he saw Kiba fall over in a bloody, broken, and unconscious heap. It was as if his body had acted on its own. The adrenaline rush he felt as he broke Kiba's arm was unlike anything he'd ever felt before. Part of him was scared. A part of him wanted more. The latter won out. Who's the dope now, mutt? Growled Naruto as he walked back toward the stands, not even going to pick up his jacket. It was only silence was broken by Kankuro. That was fast the puppeteer said with a shocked expression. He beat your record sis. I can see that. Tamari watched Naruto leave with interest, as did Gara. Hey 8 was finally snapped out of his shock and ended the match. Winner by knockout Yuzumaki Naruto. The medic speed out with a stretcher, prepared to put Kiba in intensive care. Kiba-kun. Hinata yelled as Kurinai jumped down the railings and went to her student. 
several members of the Konoha contingency met Naruto at the top of the stairs. That was uncalled for Naruto Shikamaru said frowning you didn't need to do that. Shikamaru's right. There was no need for such brute force, Asuma said as he saw Kurinai coming back while Kiba was taken away. He wanted it to end quick, Naruto answered him who am I to deny him. Asuma's eyes narrowed. Where did you learn to fight like that Naruto? Kakashi asked because as far as he knew Naruto wasn't good at tojutsu. The fluidity of Naruto's movements didn't match his previous assumptions. Not from you that's for sure he said walking through the blockade of Konohanin. Instinct guy answered that was all instinct. Instinct. Really? I find that hard to believe. Ino said, shaken to the core at how quickly and brutally Kiba was beaten. That girl is seriously stupid, he thought as he turned his back to his comrades and leaned on the railing. Naruto answered Kakashi Sensei Sakura asked honestly curious and frightened at Naruto's ferocity. As I said not from him. Naruto didn't even bother dignify the question with a look. The remainder of Team 7 frowned. Kiba has his right arm broken in half, a broken nose, a fractured jaw, and a mild concussion, Kurinai told them the damage. The Genins gasped. I don't know where you thought such behavior was tolerable Naruto, Kurinai's eyes narrowed. Enough the sand aim spoke getting everyone to look at him. Kiba was defeated. This is an exam, he knew the rules. Although, he appeared calm, deep down he too was a bit unnerved by Naruto's performance. But Kurinai tried to explain, but one last stern look from the Hokage stopped her right in her tracks. Naruto-kun, Kiba Hinata spoke in her usual reserved soft voice. Naruto looked up at her, and another memory flashed. Hey you alright Naruto smiled cheekily at a little blue-haired girl who wore a blue kimono. The girl suddenly ran off to her bodyguards who came Lady Hinata did he hurt you? One of them asked. Hinata just hugged one of them burying her face into his leg. The Hayuga bodyguards assumed the worst. Why you no good brat? The man charged at Naruto who tried to explain look, I didn't mean it. Naturally, his explanations fell on deaf ears so he was forced to run. Hayuga Hinata stalked him wherever he went since that day. She fainted whenever he got close. Naruto's eyes narrowed slightly. She saw his troubles and didn't do anything to help. He simply turned away from her as the screen began to speed through names. Worry about your own match he just said surprising a few people. Hinata flinched at his tone and looked down. Kurinai's eyes narrowed at him. Nara Shikamaru vs Kintsuchi. They called out their names when Shikamaru sighed a girl. Mindakusai. Their match didn't last very long either. Shikamaru caught in her trap. Using his Kajime no Jutsu, he forced her to hit her head against the wall. She knocked herself unconscious, thus winning the match for the lazy Nara. After Kin was carried away on a stretcher, the screen flashed again, revealing the combatants of the next match. Tsubaku no Kankuro vs Tsurugi Misumi. It seemed everyone wanted to beat Naruto's record, as Misumi was able to stretch his limbs to wrap around Kankuro and threatened to crush him if he did not yield. When Kankuro didn't relent Misumi crushed his neck only to find out that Kankuro was really a puppet, surprising everyone on the platform save his brother and sister. After that Kankuro came out of the bandages, revealing that he had hidden himself inside his puppet crow. Suddenly, crow grabbed and bound Misumi forcing his surrender. Shino vs Zaku. I will make this quick, Zaku commented as he jumped down to get the battle underway. Good luck Shino-kun, Hinata smiled at boy who nodded. Good luck Shino win this, Kurinai smiled at her student. When the battle started Shino looked at Zaku and spoke you cannot use your arms. I suggest you forfeit. Zaku smirked your teammate was that bitch that got a major beatdown right. Then my answer is he then raised his only working hand hell no bitch. Zanka. Decapitating airwaves, he then shot an airwave which Shino dodged by dissolved into bugs when it hit him shocking Zaku. Zaku kept doing trying until Shino managed to get his bugs inside his air hole, disabling the technique. Shino then warned him not use his technique, but the Odonin didn't listen, and in the end it cost him the match. The group was amazed. Wow Shino is strong, Ino said watching Chaji nod and greet Shino who came up the stairs to meet them. Well done Shino, Kurinai praised her student. Yeah well done Shino, Naruto added. Kurinai looked at him and he raised his eyebrow at that. Naruto we will talk later, Kakashi said touching his shoulder. Why? Naruto asked looking at him. No reason, Kakashi smiled. Oh, but I thought you wanted to see me. If there's no reason then we won't talk later, then Naruto's answer surprised everyone. That wasn't something they'd ever thought they'd hear out of the blonde's mouth. Kakashi knew had no choice but to come clean now, I just want to know what you learned. I learned what you taught us, Naruto said raising his eyebrow. I didn't teach you to fight like that Kakashi pointed out. Naruto smiled exactly you haven't taught us anything surprising everyone again. Naruto shrugged off Kakashi's hand that was on his shoulder. Kakashi had no reply. If he pushed for more information, Naruto would make it seem as if he had neglected his students. We will talk later Naruto Kakashi just said. Just make sure there's a reason this time, Naruto added finishing the conversation by turning back toward the screen. Shikamaru was surprised, Naruto just out-talked his teacher. 
Naruto Baka how dare you say that about Kakashi Sensei Sakura was about to put Naruto in his place when the Yuzumaki pointed at the screen. The names that came up were Naruto Sakura vs Yamanaka Ino. Sakura sweated a bit when Naruto touched her shoulder. She looked to see him smiling at her. Don't worry Sakura, show Ino what Kakashi Sensei taught you. He did teach Sasuke after all Sakura flinched. Naruto looked at Kakashi and gave him a pretty good imitation of the Cyclops's own one-eyed smile, right Sensei. The Jounins didn't like what the blonde was implying about their comrade. Kakashi closed his book and put on a serious expression. He went to Sakura and touched her shoulder. Good luck Sakura Kakashi gave an eye smile Sakura nodded. Good luck Inoasuma said his team nodded at her. Kakashi and Naruto continued their stare down. The blonde was smiling while the Jounin had a serious expression. Sensei let's watch, Naruto said. Sasuke's become much stronger with your teaching. Ino can't possibly win. I get it Naruto Kakashi said ending the matter. Then you know we won't be talking later as I have some serious training to do he responded. Kakashi was silent as a crypt. I was disappointed, Asuma shook his head and Kurenai stared curiously at Naruto. He was nothing like she had expected. The fight between the two girls went exactly how Naruto thought it would. It was the most pathetic thing anyone in the stands had ever seen. Words and weak attacks were exchanged between the girls as they battled with Academy-style BUNSHI and clone, and Tolino managed to catch Sakura with her clan's jutsu intention, no JUTSU mind transfer technique. Ino was going to force Sakura to say that she forfeited. Damn this is pathetic, Kankuro said as Tamari nodded. Gara just watched. The fight carried on as Sakura somehow kicked Ino's spirit out of her body, and they resumed their fight which ended in a double knockout from the equal haymakers the girls gave each other. When it was all said and done and both girls came to a bit later they made up and mended their friendship a little. All with their friends again Dosu said in a sarcastic and mocking chuckled while Tamari smirked. Hayuganiji vs Hayuga Hinata. Naruto narrowed his eyes as Hayuganiji walked past him. I tried to hope, fate has decreed you will never be a ninja. HMPH you should give up Lady Hinata. It is your fate to do so. Niji arrogantly smirked as he looked at her and walked down the stairs. Hinata looked sad as Kurinai put her hand on her shoulder. Hinata don't let him get you down just do your best. Okay thank you she then went to begin her fight against Niji. She looked at Naruto who turned away from her. She was determined not to let him down I won't let you down Naruto-kun. To everyone's surprise, Hinata was able to fight Niji on equal footing for the first few moments of the match. Kurenai looked at Naruto because she knew Hinata's newfound confidence was all thanks to him. But this new confidence wasn't enough in the end as Niji simply overpowered her with his superior Jiken, ending the match in his favor. Tsubaku no Gar vs Rock Lee. Yash. It's my turn. Lee exclaimed proud making his teacher scream in glee. Oh my student. Guy gave a thumbs up and Lee jumped down to fight Gara, who was waiting patiently. This was by far the most competitive match so far. Gara's sand defense seemed pretty much impenetrable until Lee took off his weights. When Lee released five out of the eight Hachiman gates, his speed was absolutely outrageous. I can't believe someone can move that fast. Naruto thought in awe. Naruto realized that if he faced Gara or even Lee as he was now, he would get creamed. Damn it what was I doing all this time? He thought. Lee trained until he dropped for years while he was busy playing pranks, chasing after a pink banshee, and foolishly listening to his sensei. However, Lee's body couldn't withstand the pressure of the Hachiman gates for very long. Gara's second sand armor simply outlasted Lee's body. The reverse lotus was the last straw. When Lee fell over in pain, Gara used the opportunity to attack Lee with his sand. The sand latched onto his arm and leg. Gara was about to finish him off, but Guy stopped him before Gara could complete his sand burial technique. Man that was amazing. Naruto looked at Niji you have an amazing teacher. Want to swap? No, Niji just replied looking stoic. Why not? Naruto pointed at Kakashi, he's the copy ninja. He will not benefit me, Niji just said. Quite frankly, he didn't want to talk with this dope. Oh my god Kakashi, Naruto looked shocked at his sensei he just called you useless. You're not useless because you'll help me in my training, right? No one said anything. Naruto smirked, I want to see how he's going to get out of this one. Makakashi gave an eye smile later okay. Naruto groaned channeling his kill me orange personality, but sensei that's what you always say. Sakura and Sasuke have gotten stronger why not me? Sakura was confused by the lack of suffix on her name. Kakashi's single eye went white a bit. They both wondered the same thing what happened to you, Naruto. You humans are funny, Kaiubi chuckled as he watched everything. Naruto froze what is the fox planning? You know what forget it, I'm done with your excuses. Naruto dismissed Kakashi. You were never there for me and you never will. Kakashi's eyes widened at that. He thought of more than just his failures as Team 7's Jimin. He thought of his failures to protect his sensei's legacy. Sensei, I'm sorry he looked down in shame. Naruto. How dare you speak Sakura yelled but stopped when Naruto gave her a dark glare. Shut up. 
Those two words effectively ended the conversation as the next two competitors were called. Akamichi Chaoji vs Dosu Kanuda. Chaoji lost pretty quickly. He simply couldn't win against Dosu Zan techniques. Even with his Baika no Jutsu, he wasn't able to win against the Odo Genin. You will tell me everything Naruto whispered to himself. The fox heard but didn't respond. But the preliminaries over, the winners were then briefed on the last portion of the exam. Okay now you will get a tab telling you who you will face in the final exams, here is in gestured Anko to get the box of tabs and give them to everyone to pick. Alright everyone pick a number Anko went to everyone who put their hands inside the box and pulled out a tab. Anko winked at Naruto when he got his. The Yuzumaki raised his eyebrow at the eccentric woman. What are your numbers Suratobi spoke. The Genins answered. Five guard drones. Three Kankuro says. Seven Tamari calls out. One Naruto says. Nine Shikamaru responds. 4. Shino responds. Duniji spoke softly. 8. Dosu said. 6. Kakashi responds in Sasuke's place. Okay the matchups for the finals are as follows. First match Uzumaki Naruto vs. Haikuniji. Second match Subaku no Kankuro vs. Aburam Shin. Third match Ichiha Sasuke vs. Subaku no Gara. Fourth match Subaku no Tamari vs. Dosu Kanuda. Finally Nara Shikamaru faces the fourth match victor, Hei called out. That concludes the second phase of the Chiknin exams. You each have a month before the finals to prepare yourselves and get stronger. Any questions? The Sandium asks. Does the winner automatically get promoted? Shikamaru lazily points out. Not necessarily, the winner of the finals may not be promoted at all. Likewise the losers might get promoted or no one at all. If you show you have both the ability and mentality to be a Chiknin, then you will be recommended for a promotion. From there, it will be up to your cages or council to decide, the Hokage informed them. The Genin seems satisfied with the answer. You all may leave and rest. Good luck. The third Hokage waved his hand to conclude the Chunin exams as the Genin saluted and left. Immediately, Kakashi, Sakura, and Saratobi eyed Naruto hoping to talk to him at some point in the next month to get some answers. As Naruto left, he knew he had a big month ahead of him. First, he had to get some answers. The Kaiubi was experiencing his thoughts and actions and it troubled him. And these darker thoughts, feelings, and intentions weren't making him feel any better. But more importantly, he needed to get stronger. He thought back to his father's last words to him. It's okay, Naruto this is your dad. Listen to your motor mouth mother. I want you to be the greatest ninja ever. I promise dad, Naruto grinned. I'm going to be the greatest ninja ever. Believe it. Naruto reached his apartment just after sundown in a pretty somber mood. He knew his first and foremost priority was to try and figure out what the heck was going on. The thoughts, the urges, and the frustration and Haiti had never experienced them before. It was almost as if they weren't his. Oh they most definitely are yours, chuckled the Kaiubi. The Kaiubi. So now you talk. The answer was given. Damn it. Answer me. He screamed. But his mind stayed silent. Fine. If you won't answer me, I'll come get some. After eating a quick dinner of cup ramen, Naruto got on his bed in the lotus position, trying to find his way back to his seal. He tried probing the recesses of his mind for sowers back to the Kaiubi, but wasn't working. All he saw in his mindscape was an endless sea of white. It was as if something was preventing him from facing the fox. I'm out you stupid fox. Growled Naruto. Instead of silence, he heard menacing laughter. Who's there? He asked looking around. All of a sudden, a dark shadow rose upright in front of him and transformed into him. Why I'm you of course. He cackled. W what do you mean? Asked a shocked Naruto. I'm the real you. The one that's been hidden away all this time, said dark Naruto. Yes, the seal is fully complete. The Kaiubi said, what was lost has been found. What was lost Naruto said and thought you mean you lost something Kaiubi chuckled, its damn chuckle always made him shiver. Indeed, it smirked. But it appears I wasn't the only one. What was lost has been found he mumbled. You're my darker half. You're the reason why I'm having these thoughts. No, I am the real you. You're nothing more than a mask trying to hide your sadness, frustration, and anger, laughed dark Naruto. And then he charged. Before Naruto could snap out of his shock, he got a mean right hook to the face knocking him to the floor. Pathetic. You let all those villagers walk all over you. They hate you, he said. Freak, monster, mom said I can't play with you, he's that boy, demon, they want to see you suffer. They want to see you fail. He continued. I want to be Hokage. The greatest of them all. Naruto yelled standing in front of the class. Everyone soon laughed at him. Like you can be, Doba boy with a dog in his head insulted you failed twice now. Yeah Naruto Baka. A pink haired girl yelled when everyone now threw insults at him. One word was the most consistent of them all. Dope. No one cared. No one loved you. But you don't need them. All you need is me. Join me and we'll get our revenge, he said extending his hand out. 
Maybe he's right no one's ever cared for me, no one's ever loved me, Naruto thought as he slowly reached for his darker half's hand. There there's so much more I want to say to teach you about I want to stay with you. I love you my baby. I'm sorry Minato. I took all your time. It's okay. Naruto this is your dad. Listen to your motor mouth mother. I want you to be the greatest ninja ever. I love you my baby. T they loved em me. I love you my baby. They loved me. I love you. They loved me. No. Instead of grabbing the outstretched hand, Naruto punched his darker half in the face, sending him to the floor. You fool. How can you possibly forgive those who have wronged you? Dark Naruto screamed. I didn't say I've forgiven them. I never will. But that doesn't mean massacring them is the right thing to do, spoke a calm Naruto. You don't understand. They'll never accept you. They'll continue to walk all over you. They'll continue to hurt you. No. You're the one who doesn't understand. The Kaiubi was right. I am complete now. You make me complete, explained Naruto. W what do you mean? Asked a dark one. You are my inner darkness. You are the anger, the frustration, the hatred I felt for all those who have wronged me. And I am or was the happy-go-lucky Naruto who let everything just roll off his back. But neither of us are complete without the other. Deep down, even when I would grin and bear it, there was a part of me that felt that same anger, frustration, and hatred you felt. And somewhere underneath all that hatred that you've let overwhelm and control you, you don't really want to hurt anyone either, am I right? His darker half didn't respond only looked away. With the lack of response, Naruto decided to the only thing that seemed to make sense he walked over to his darker form and offered him a hand up. How do I know you won't just forgive and forget like you used to? Asked Dark Naruto looking up at the offered hand. Why you'll be there to make sure I don't. Said Naruto in a more exuberant voice than was necessary. You're right I can't trust you to do this on your own, so I'll have to be there to make sure you don't screw this up, chuckled the Dark Naruto as he reached for his light side's hand. Besides, I think we would be pretty baddest together. Am straight. And at this Naruto both yin and yang grinned sealing the handshake. Soon, Naruto's darker form disintegrated and was absorbed by his yang self. When the emerging was over, an odd sense of calm washed over him. He suddenly felt stronger. He suddenly felt faster. He suddenly felt more at ease than he'd ever felt in his entire life. More importantly, for the first time in his life, he felt complete. Before Naruto could gather his bearings, the endless white became a lush meadow full of life. A meadow really? I didn't think the inside of my head would be so weird he thought. He wasn't the only one. You certainly have some weird things happening in that head of yours don't cha Naruto-kun? Asked a feminine voice behind him. Naruto turned around to see a beautiful red-haired woman with blue eyes in a long pale green dress. She walked hand in hand with a tall blonde-haired man wearing a standard Konohan in uniform underneath a long white coat decorated with flame-like motifs on the edges. Wait long white coat decorated with flame-like motifs. He thought. Only one person was ever known to wear such a coat. Beyond Aim Ho he started. I bet he gets that from Yukashina, the yellow flash joked. What was that, Minato-kun? Care to explain what you mean by that? The now dubbed Kashina said in a menacing tone with a visible twitch in her eyes. She even brought her fist up to his face. I'm sorry Minato. I took all your time she said when the male voice entered now. It's okay, Naruto this is your dad. Listen to your motor mouth mother. I want you to be the greatest ninja ever. Beyond Aim my father? He thought. Nothing. Nothing at all. I didn't mean anything by it. The Yandane pleaded holding his arms over his head, trying to shield himself from the beating he was surely going to receive. Red heads and their tempers sheesh. W-Y. Naruto mumbled. This was beginning to become too much for him to handle. He tried desperately to hold back tears. This got the couple's attention. Would you do it? Why did you seal the Kaiubi and your own son? He screamed. His parents looked down in shame. All the hate. All the loneliness. All the suffering. How could you do that to me? This time the tears couldn't be stopped. Silence reigned. For what seemed like hours, no one knew what to say. Naruto, how old are you now? Asked Minato. Twelve going on thirteen, he said trying to wipe away some of the waterworks. Minato sighed, not even thirteen, and already shouldering the burden of the world. He couldn't help but feel that stab of pain watching his son cry in front of him. We know that after all that has happened to you, we don't deserve to be called your parents, Kishina began, our greatest regret was passing on this burden without being there for you to shoulder it. Again, there was silence. Although, it was a little less awkward and depressing than last time. What made you think I could handle it? He asked remembering their last words to him. Because you're our son, they answered in unison. It's only natural for the parents to believe that their children will surpass them. Continued his father with a smile. Ah you have some high expectations dad, chuckled Naruto. I know. But I know you'll surpass even me one day, his father said with the utmost conviction. How can you be so sure? He asked. Just call it a hunch, Minato smiled. And never doubt a mother's intuition. 
His mother exclaimed as if that defeated all possible negatives. Somehow, Naruto couldn't help but smile at his mother's enthusiasm. Naruto. There are a few things we need to tell you, his father said in a serious tone. First, your mother was the previous host of the Kai Ubi. On the night your birth, your mother and I were attacked seconds after your birth. That man's name was Madara Ichiha, and so Minato recounted the events of that fateful night. I see I'll need the Kai Ubi's strength one day to stop whatever he plans to accomplish, Naruto summarized. Yes. Kashina and I sealed some of our chakra in the seal before we passed away in order to help you on that goal. My chakra was to be awakened should you prematurely start losing your mind from the Kai Ubi's power. And your mother would be there when you would fight the Kai Ubi for control of his chakra, said his father. But with the Kai Ubi's yin chakra returned and you now knowing its name, neither of us need to fulfill our roles anymore, his mother finished. So you're going to just leave me? But I have so much to ask you. How did you guys meet? How'd you fall in love? Would you name me Naruto? He asked. This would be his only time meeting with his parents he couldn't just let them leave so soon. Ah that last one's easy. We named you after the hero from Jiraiya Sensei's first book. We hope that you would one day be a great ninja like the one from the book, chuckled Minato. Jiraiya Sensei. I thought you told me to stay away from him, mused Naruto. As you should. He's a pervert. Kishina huffed. A pee pervert. Yeah he tried to peek on your mother and me during the process of creating you, his father said clearly embarrassed at the turn the conversation had taken. The process of creating me? You and Naruto shivered at the thought of his parents doing the nasty. As for the first two, your father and I went to the academy together. On my first day there, the class was going around talking about our goals. Both us said we wanted to be Hokage. Of course, Minato looked like a total flake and wuss when he was younger, so no one took him seriously, smiled Kashina. An indignant cry of hey. Was heard from the Yandame, but was promptly ignored. But one day, some Kumo ninja kidnapped me in order to use my special chakra chains to gain control of the Kai Ubi. On the way to Kumo, I secretly plucked and left strands of my red hair to mark the trail, hoping someone would find me. As fate would have it, your father found the trail saying how he admired my hair, even though I hated it. I guess you could say it was the red thread of fate that brought Kanoha's yellow flash and red hot-blooded habanero together, she finished. Um, I always knew there was a reason why I liked orange. I guess subconsciously I was carrying on the dream you guys passed on to me, mused Naruto to himself. Naruto, you should know that we'll never actually leave you, his father said coming closer to him. We'll always be right here with you, he finished by touching the spot on Naruto's chest where his heart was. We'll always be there guiding you, helping you and watching, said his mother bringing her face down to meet his. I can already see it in your eyes Naruto-kun. You're already strong. And you'll only get stronger as you go. And for the first time ever, the entire Yuzumaki Namaka's family shared one heartfelt hug together. No one present could hold back the waterworks. A few minutes later, it was time to go. Naruto, always know that we loved you so very much, cried Kishina planting a soft kiss on his right cheek. And remember that no matter what we'll always believe in you and be proud of you son, finished Minato ruffling Naruto's hair. A few seconds later, Minato, Kashina, and the meadow disappeared back into the endless sea of white. They believed in me. They were proud of me. They loved me, smiled Naruto. Now, I have one last task to complete. Again, the white disappeared this time becoming a dark dank and dimly lit sower. So, you've met with your parents. Why am I not surprised that they left some chakra in you? Snarled the Kaiubi. You could tell I was with them. Asked Naruto. I meant to bring you here after you fought your darker half, but your parents got to you first brat. I see. What do you want from me then Kurama? Asked Naruto going back to the original question. At this, a ridiculous amount of killer intent leaked out from behind the bars. You will not call me by that name Ninjin. Screamed the Kaiubi as it tried to lash out at Naruto. It was suffocating. It was like trying to breathe underwater. A fine Kaiubi why did you want to see me before? He asked being cowed by the sheer amount of chakra. I want to know what you intend to do, the Biju stated finally reeling in its chakra. The train for the month I have off, Naruto said matter-of-factly. And after. It's okay, Naruto this is your dad. Listen to your motor mouth mother. I want you to be the greatest ninja ever. To be the greatest ninja ever whispered Naruto. It would be interesting if did you become Hokage, Kaiubi smirked. You make it sound like I would reject the offer. Will you you aren't who you were before, probed Kaiubi. We'll see when the time comes, said Naruto returning the Kaiubi smirk. But I have one other goal. Oh, and what would this grand ambition be? Joked the Biju. To make you see past your hatred, stated Naruto. Do not patronize me boy. I am the Kaiubi no Yoko most powerful of all nine Biju born from the foulest chakra to ever exist. There is nothing in me but hatred. Roared the Kaiubi. This time the killer intent felt life the weight of the entire world on Naruto. But unlike last time, Naruto didn't waver. You're wrong. You said it yourself, we are now complete. 
you have your yin chakra back and I now understand my inner darkness. Even when I forgave and forgot the abuse I suffered, deep down inside I still held on to some of that hatred and sadness. As such, even through all the hatred you must feel for us, the suffering from being sealed into Jinchiriki, and the loneliness and sadness of never having a friend, there is still good in you, Naruto declared looking the Kyubi right in the eyes. You lie. It thundered. I'm not. I can see it in your eyes, Kurama. I can see the pain and sadness of losing someone precious to you, said Naruto never losing eye contact with the Nine Tails. At this, the Kaiubi flinched. Please don't go, a younger Kaiubi pleaded. I'm sorry Kurama, but my time has come, a man with ripple-like patterns in each of his purpler eyes is said. Come here, he gestured for the teary-eyed Kitsune to come closer so they could see eye to eye one last time. No matter how far apart you'll be, we'll always be connected, the Rinnegan user said. He pointed to his heart, right here. And one day, you'll be guided down the right path. One single tear fell from the Kayubi's eyes. Father, after several minutes of silence, the Biju looked back at its Jinchiriki. His eyes they are so much like his so full of passion, so full of understanding so full of determination Kurama thought. No matter how far apart you'll be, we'll always be connected, the Rinnegan user said. He pointed to his heart, right here. And one day, you'll be guided down the right path. After centuries maybe just maybe I can believe in those words one last time. All right you little brat. I'm going to make you a deal. I'll share my power with you and in exchange you shall acknowledge me as your master. Grint Kurama. Of course Kurama-sama. Naruto beamed. He held his fist out to the kitsune. It's Kayubi-sama to you, pathetic ninja. I refuse to allow Shukaku's container to be stronger than mine, so you'd better train until you drop this next month brat, the Kayubi smirked. But nonetheless, he returned Naruto's gesture. That fist bump would go down as one of the landmark moments of ninja history. When Naruto woke up, it was already well past noon the next day. As he got out of bed, he noticed something was off. His clothes no longer fit him as well as they used to. He was at least two inches taller and had much more muscle mass than when he entered his meditative state less than 24 hours ago. Never had he felt so strong or so alive. I take it you like your makeover. You can say that, Naruto smiled. Is this the effect of our deal? No. This is the result of my yin chakra returning to me. Since I am whole now, my powers have returned to me. Ours? Naruto questioned. Yes. Each Biju has unique ability. My younger brother the Ichibi grants that Suna boy can troll over sand. One of my most prized abilities is chakra replenishment. I can take the natural energy of the world around me to replenish my chakra indefinitely. So how does this affect me? The seal your parents put on you gradually converted some of my chakra to become yours. Because I am complete, the amount of chakra converted has increased dramatically, thus the extreme change to your appearance and body in such a short amount of time, the Kaiubi explained. You don't seem to be perturbed in the least that I am absorbing your chakra at a faster rate than before, Naruto mumbled. It would take many centuries before your reserves could even begin to compare to my own, laughed the Kaiubi. With the return of my chakra replenishment ability, I can replenish my chakra much faster than you can absorb it. Wait a minute you said that was one of your abilities what else can you do? Asked Naruto. You'll have to just wait and find out for yourself Brad, said the Kaiubi. Naruto could almost imagine it smirking at him. A few moments of silence occurred as Naruto took in this information. By the way, since when were you smart enough to use big words like perturbed? Joked the Kitsune. A rather large tick mark appeared on Naruto's forehead as his left eye twitched uncontrollably. Mutterings of stupid fox and thinks the sun shines out of his ass were heard as Naruto left to get some ramen. Lunch was a rather pleasant experience. Naruto enjoyed well over two dozen bowls of Raymond as he told Tuchi and AM of his advancement in the Chunin exams. After lunch, he went to the Kanoha shopping district to find new clothes. Finding something orange yet tasteful wasn't easy to do. Excuse me ma'am. Do you have this jumpsuit in orange? Asked Naruto. Orange? What are you crazy? Do you have any fashion sense at all? The shopkeeper asked incredulously. Naruto answered her with a glare. The shopkeeper merely scoffed and went off to attend to another customer. I'll have her know that orange is awesome. Said Naruto with a fist pump. Orange. Awesome. In what alternate reality is that possible? Said an amused feminine voice behind him. What was that? Naruto asked turning around to meet the gaze of a smiling Sabaku no Tamari. The civilian clothing and bags of clothing let him know that he wasn't the only one clothes shopping today. Naruto couldn't help but stare at the difference in Tamari's appearance from civilian clothing to ninja gear. She is a rather fine specimen to look at, isn't she brat? Much better than that other teammate of yours, said a certain devious fox. A rather large blush appeared on Naruto's face. Shut up Hiro Kitsune. He screamed in his head. In no way shape or form will orange ever be fashionable, Tamari teased snapping him out of his stupor. Ha! When I become the greatest shinobi in the world, people will be dying to wear orange. 
declared Naruto still trying to hide his blush. That got Tamari to raise an eyebrow. Bold words, can you back them up, Naruto-san? You'll see in a month now, will you, Tamari-san? Naruto grinned. I guess I will. I'll see in a month then Naruto, stated Tamari walking out of the shop. Of course, Tamari-san, Naruto chuckled. Oh and drop the suffixes. They don't really suit me, she said turning back around to face him. Alright. Good luck in the exams Tamari-chan, Naruto teased. Naruto couldn't help but laugh at the noticeable twitch in her eye before she left the shop. As Naruto left the shop, an Anbu appeared before him. Okijama wishes to speak with you, said the Anbu. I see, was Naruto's response. He had been expecting this. The old man probably wanted to know what changed in Naruto. That was fine because Naruto had some questions of his own that needed answering. Irizen Saratobi was very concerned about the sudden changes to surrogate grandson. From reports, he learned that Orochimaru had placed the five-pronged seal onto Naruto. He hoped nothing disastrous happened to the Kaiubi seal. Was it him or was the Naruto that walked through the door slightly taller than he was yesterday? Have a seat Naruto-kun, said the third. First, I must congratulate you on making it to the finals. Your match against Kiba was most impressive. Thank you, old man. But let me guess, the real reason you want to see me is to talk about my recent changes, isn't it? Asked Naruto. Yes, I wish to inquire about your more aggressive nature recently, the Hokage stated calmly. Though, on the inside, he made a note about how this Naruto was far more direct and to the point than before. I finally got tired of everyone treating me like I was a demon, Naruto said in an even tone. I'm sorry Naruto-kun, the aged Hokage said, bowing his head in shame. Why do people hate me old man, why? Young Naruto cried. I'm sorry Naruto-kun, it will be better the third hugged the child who cried in his arms. That's what you always say to me. Naruto roared suddenly. He was huffing now just just stop saying that his voice was breaking. Alright was the only thing the third could say. After several minutes of awkward silence, Naruto began his most important question, why didn't tell me my father was the Yondame? At this, the third's eyes widened to comic proportions. Naruto, how did you? It doesn't matter. Just answer me. Please. Just this once, answer my question, Naruto pleaded. Here is in Saratobi let out a rather long sigh. Your father was beloved by the people of this nation as a hero and as the strongest shinobi ever produced within these village gates. But outside of the land of fire, he was feared and hated especially in Iowa. Your father alone won us the third shinobi war. I can't even begin to imagine how many Iowa ninja he killed with his Horatian no jutsu. That jutsu alone gave him the first and only flea on side order in the bingo book. Even today, Iwa is still crippled by the damage your father inflicted on them. By giving you your mother's last name I was trying to protect you from possible Iwa assassins as well as politics. Politics. Yes, politics. Do you know my advisor Danzo? He has always wanted to train you to be one of his emotionless root pawns for the benefit of the villager so he says. Being the son of a former Hokage and the Jinchuriki of the Kaiubi would make you an amazing weapon to have in his back pocket both militarily and politically, answered the third. I see, and what about the villagers? Was there nothing you could do about them? Naruto asked. I know you don't want to hear this, but I'm sorry. There was no way I could stop all the ignorance and abuse of the civilians without revealing your identity. All I could do was make a law forbidding anyone from speaking about it directly that way at least the children in your age group would grow up not knowing the burden you held, explained the Sandame. It didn't help me make friends did it? No, I suppose it didn't. Most parents ended up telling their children to stay away from you, sighed Saratobi. I hope one day you will find it in your heart to forgive me and the village. I don't know if that day will ever come Jiji-san. There are just too many memories, too much pain, and too much loneliness to ignore. I don't want revenge or just punishment, but I don't think I'll be able to forgive either. I just want to move on said Asama Naruto. I see. You have indeed become strong Naruto. Minato and Kishina would have been proud, smiled Hiruzen. I know. They told me. They left some of their chakra inside my seal. I saw them last night, said Naruto enjoying the genuinely shocked look on the third Hokage's face. The third let out a boisterous laugh. Your parents were stubborn until the end. He reached for something in his desk and pulled out what looked to be a picture frame. This is something that you should have, he said handing the picture over to Naruto. I meant to give this to you once you became a jonin and were ready to finally learn the truth. It was a picture of his mother and father on their wedding day. Naruto couldn't stop the tears from coming out once again. I also want you to have this as well. Think of this as a memento from your father, he said, handing over a three-bladed kunai with strange markings on a longer than normal handle. Duration awed Naruto. Yes, this kunai made your father the most feared man to ever walk the elemental nations. Maybe one day you will be able to recreate it, but first you'll have to study up on Fuenjutsu if you want to do so, said the old man. Do you have any scrolls on Fuenjutsu? Naruto asked. He remembered that both his parents had been experts at the obscure ninja art. 
I'm afraid I don't, but I have something even better, I have a teacher in mind for you, smiled Saratobi. You should go meet him by the hot springs today. But first, he reached into his desk again this time to pull out your piece of paper, I want you to first channel chakra into this. Naruto nodded and began channeling his chakra into the paper. He watched as the paper glowed blue for a brief second before splitting down the middle while the two halves, one became soaking wet and the other wrinkled to bits. Saratobi went wide-eyed at seeing Naruto have three affinities. Amazing, the third whispered. He was attuned to three elements. He smiled softly, it seemed fate smiled at the boy. For the third time today, he went into his desk this time taking out three scrolls. Well, it seems you have three elemental affinities Naruto-kun. That's very impressive for someone at your age. You seem to have high affinities in wind, water and lightning. Now these three scrolls here have three jutsu for each of your three elements. He put them out for him to take. My Naruto don't be a fussy eater eat a lot and grow up to be a big boy. Go to bed early and sleep well, take your bath every day. The voice coughed she sounded to be in pain make friends, it doesn't matter how many. Just make sure they're real friends people you can trust even a few is enough. And study your ninjutsu I was never good at it, maybe you will be. Ninjutsu, take it my boy, the third smiled. DH thank you, Naruto bowed a bit. It's what you deserve Naruto-kun. Train and get stronger, the old man smiled as Naruto put them in his pouch. I will I promise. Old man I won't let you down. Naruto promised. I won't let you down either mom, I know you will, the third smiled that boy never did. Naruto hugged the old man and thanked him one last time before leaving. It was not until after Naruto left that Hiruzen acknowledged the present sitting outside his open window. You're going to have your hands full, Jiraiya, smiled the elder Hokage. His personality is a mix of Kishina and Minato. Hopefully he didn't inherit his mother's temper, joked the Toad Sage. His potential is indescribable. Three elemental affinities and the Kaiubi alone would make him a force to be reckoned with. Of course, he'll need a lot more chakra control than he has now. Then I'm going to give him his birthright. If he can master that then his chakra control problem should disappear, stated Jiraiya. That's going to raise some eyebrows a young boy that looks like a younger Yande and using one of his signature techniques. I will will be up in arms, said Saratobi with a touch of concern. Then I'll just have to make sure he's capable of defending himself by the end of the month then, won't I? Laughed Jiraiya. Of course, I'll have to do a checkup on that seal of his first to make sure the snake didn't damage it. Maybe Minato's and Kashina's presence changed the seal some. A third nodded, be sure that you do. After all that he's gone through, I would love nothing more than for Naruto to show the village what a splendid ninja he can become. The toad sage simply nodded and left in a swirl of leaves. The third looked up at the portrait of the Yandame. He will grow strong Minato. I can already see it in his eye, he's going to surpass you one day, I'll make sure of it. He declared. Needless to say, Naruto was absolutely giddy about the possibility of learning so many jutsu from the scrolls in his hands. He briskly walked back to his apartment trying to get ready to meet his new sensei for the month at the hot springs. Way to minute hot springs. Why would my sensei be there? He thought. His train of thought was broken when he noticed his silver-haired jonin sensei leaning against the railing of his apartment. Hello, Kakashi sensei. No porno book today. No, not today. Although, there should a new edition out next week. No, I'm here to talk to you today, said a surprisingly serious Kakashi. Oh, and what would this be about sensei? Asked Naruto with a raised eyebrow. Kakashi let out a sigh. This was going to be long and hard to explain. Naruto, I want you to know how sorry I am. I've let you down in more ways than just as your sensei, he said before pausing. I know I wasn't the best sensei to Team 7. I taught you guys teamwork, but nothing to better yourselves individually. As a result, Sakura barely put up a fight against Ino. Sasuke simply fell back on his clan techniques and Sharingan to help him pull through. You on the other hand, relied solely on instincts to win your match against Kiba. You showed strength no one else thought you had. Now by the looks of those scrolls, it seems like you are learning elemental jutsu for your affinities. Naruto, I know that I can't take credit for it, but I'm proud of the ninja you've become. I don't know if anyone's ever said this to you, but many times you can know how strong someone is simply by looking at them in the eyes. And in your eyes, I see someone who's been able to overcome the hardship he's dealt with his entire life and resolve to become stronger. Your parents would be so proud. I know they've told me, smirked Naruto. At Kakashi's shocked expression, Naruto idly wondered if everyone's reaction he told this information to would be as funny as Kakashi's and the old man's. How? How did? They left some of their chakra in my seal, Naruto said giving him the same explanation he gave the Hokage. At this, Kakashi had to chuckle and shake his head before he adopted a more downcast expression. I don't know if anyone's ever told you this, but I was on your father's genin team. Your father was a great man, he was like a second father to me when my own took his own life, and your mother became something of an older sister to me as well. 
One of my greatest regrets in my life was not being able to shield you his son from the hate and abuse you took at the hand of the villagers. When I was a part of the Anbu, I would often guard you from ninja or villagers that would try to harm you. But I couldn't always protect you due to my other duties as an Anbu operative that would tack me out of the village, and I couldn't adopt you because of how suspicious it would be for the Yandame's last living student to adopt a small child that looks exactly like him. I know you are tired of hearing it, but I'm truly sorry Naruto both for failing you as a sensei and as an older brother," finished Kakashi. An older brother? Questioned Naruto with a raised eyebrow. Yes. Your father was like a father to me as well, so I guess I can call you my younger brother, one eye smiled Kakashi. I already talked to the old man. I understand the situation you two were placed in because of my father's prowess as a ninja. Had you adopted me, Iwa would have sent their entire Anbu team to try and assassinate me, started Naruto. And as for your failures as a sensei, how about you remedy that now? I could use some advice learning my wind, lightning, and water affinities in Nikki grinned Naruto. Three affinities huh? You are definitely Kanoha's most surprising ninja, chuckled Kakashi. You know, the cage bushin you are so fond of using can definitely help you out in your elemental training. Did you know that any experience you gained by your clones are returned to you? The total amount of experience the user gains is multiplied by the total number of clones being used to be trained. At this, Naruto's eyes widened at the implications of this new information. Oh, that will definitely speed things up, said the voice in his head. Now as for your affinities, I don't know any Futen Jutsu, but I've copied a few Suiten Jutsu, and Raten is my main affinity. I'll definitely send over a few scrolls of Suiten Jutsu whenever your sensei says you're ready to learn them. As for Raten, I've decided to teach my Itauta my first original technique. The Kashi's eyes gleamed. I'm going to teach you the Chidori. Later that day, Naruto found himself at the Kanoha Hot Springs. Again, he wondered why he was here. Perhaps, it was to use the hot springs water to learn the water walking exercise Kakashi had told him about. His musing was interrupted when he heard rather perverse giggle one that he often heard from his new Aniki when he read his trashy porno books. Following the sound, he saw a rather tall man with spiky white hair and large scroll on his back bent down behind the fence of women's hot springs scribbling down notes. Wow this guy is a total perv, muttered Naruto. Be careful. Appearances can be deceiving ninjin, said the demon fox. It seemed to be talking a lot more recently. Hey you. Why are you? Naruto shouted, only to be stopped by a hand on his mouth. S-H-H-H-H-H-H-H. Be quiet kid. Are you trying to get us in trouble? The pervert asked in a whisper. Who are you and why are peeking on the women's bath? Asked Naruto finally breaking free of the man's grasp. Why I'm doing research for my book series. He exclaimed as a familiar book magically appeared in his hand. So you're that pervert that writes those trashy porno books. Accused Naruto. They are not some trashy porno books. They are works of literary art. And I'm not a pervert I am Jureya the super pervert. He declared happily. Naruto sweat dropped at the last part of his rant. Jureya sensei. I thought you told me to stay away from him, mused Naruto. As you should. He's a pervert. Kashina huffed. A pee pervert. Yeah he tried to peek on your mother and me during the process of creating you, his father said clearly embarrassed at the turn the conversation had taken. So this was my dad sensei. I hope he didn't corrupt my dad or me for that matter Naruto thought. So you're Jirai and Naruto said walking closer to the man. Ah. So you've heard the tales of the gallant Jirai Jiraiya began to brag until Naruto gave him a rather hard kick in the man's own. This left him on the ground moaning and groaning in pain. Somewhere in the village of Kanahagakur, Saratobi Hirazan and Hadakakashi shivered in fear and moved to protect their family jewels. That was for peeking on my parents during their alone time, said Naruto walking away. About three minutes later as Naruto was walking back toward his apartment when Jiraiya finally caught up to him. So you really met your parents yesterday? Jiraiya asked. Yes, I did Kyofu. My father wanted me to stay away from you so you don't corrupt me, he smirked. Jiraiya narrowed his eyes and muttered something about disrespectful blonde Gakus. They shared a moment of silence until Jiraiya spoke again. So you're wondering why I left you alone right? Naruto simply nodded. I don't know if you know this, but I run Kanoha's entire spy network. I'm the one who works to make sure that nothing threatens Kanoha. It would draw too much attention if a Sanin suddenly adopted a child that looked like his previous apprentice. And I can't handle espionage missions while taking care of a small child. Is that why you're back? To stop your Sanin teammate from getting the Sharingan? Naruto questioned. Perceptive aren't you? Yes, part of the reason I'm here is to make sure whatever my snake of a teammate is planning fails. The other part of the reason I'm here is to see what's going on with my godson after all these years, to train him so he can protect himself and to give him part of his legacy, Jiraiya grinned. That last part caught Naruto's interest. Legacy. Yes, I'm going to give you the toad summoning contract and teach you one of your father's signature techniques, Jiraiya started. 
The Rasengan, he finished creating a swirling ball of blue chakra in his hand. I can tell you also want to do some elemental training as well, correct? He asked. Yeah. I'm going to abuse the hell out of the cage bushin to speed up the process, Naruto grinned. So, you know the secret of the cage bushin. That would definitely speed things along. But can you really handle it? The amount of chakra needed for that sort of training is pretty high, the toad sage asked. I think the fur ball in my gut can handle it, Naruto stated. If you're going to use my chakra, you'd better make sure you actually do get stronger. I will not get shown up by the Ichibi, said the Kaiubi. And I'm not just some furball, brat. So, you're going to use the Kaiubi's chakra? Is that wise? Asked a concerned Jiraiya. Yeah. We have come to an understanding of sorts. Apparently, as long as I refer to him as Kaiubi-sama, he'll share his chakra with me. We even fist bumped on it, Naruto tried not to laugh as Jiraiya's eyes bugged out. Well, if you are going to be using its chakra, you just might be able to master all three of your affinities by the end of this month. You also want to learn some Fuinjutsu as well right? Asked Jiraiya. At Naruto's nod, Jiraiya continued, okay. Here's what we'll do. Every day you will create 200 cage bushins for elemental training, starting with wind, since that was the first element that showed up and an extra 20 to learn and practice Fuinjutsu from one of my own cage bushin. By using the Kaiubi's chakra, you won't have the problem where your chakra is evenly distributed among your clones. Afterwards, we will go to lightning because water will be the hardest for you to use during the exams. At Naruto's questioning gaze, Jiraiya continued, water is much much easier to use in the presence of a body of water. The finals will take place in a dry stadium, so learning Suiten Jutsu won't be incredibly useful for the exam. That's why you'll be learning at last. After you've learned the Rasengan, we'll be working on your strength, speed, and Tijutsu. Does that sound good to you? Not finding any fault in the plan, Naruto simply nodded. Good, the Toad Sage said unsealing a water balloon and throwing it to Naruto. Now I want you to pop this balloon using only your chakra. Four weeks later, Naruto was on his bed reading Jiraiya's first book. The last month had been hellacious. After learning the Rasengan, Naruto's physical training under Jiraiya began. Early on, even with his enhanced physical abilities due to the Kaiubi, he was still no match for Jiraiya. But through the use of weights and gravity seals, Naruto's strength and speed increased dramatically. He had mastered nature manipulation for both his wind and lightning elements. He could now manifest his wind chakra into his Tajutsu and use the Chidori he even found a way around the tunnel vision problem with the Chidori. But he did run into some problems. His progress with Yuinjutsu was slow moving as well as his water manipulation. As Jiraiya had said, it was extremely hard to manipulate water without a body of water already present. Also, because he lived in the land of fire, there was a distinct lack of wind and lightning jutsus to learn. As a result, he had to resort to trying to create his own jutsu, but that too was also slow moving though he had been able to create a few through using known jutsu for inspiration. Also, Naruto learned from Jiraiya that wind manipulation was several times stronger when used in conjunction with a weapon like Tamari and her fan. But given that he only had one month, he couldn't possibly learn how to use any weapon with enough proficiency to use in the finals. Despite all that, Naruto, Jiraiya, and even the Kaiubi were confident that none of the prospective genin would be able to hold a candle to him. Jiraiya had also drawn up some chakra-suppressing seals, just in case Gara's little friend wanted to come out and play. According to Jiraiya's spy network, there were rumors of dealings between Odo and Suna. The fact that Orochimaru had shown up at the second part of the exam and that Suna's Jinchuriki was a part of the Chunin exam finals made their plan very clear. War was coming. If worst came to worst, Naruto would have to unveil some of his more powerful jutsu to stop the invasion. Since that was the case, Naruto made it his goal to end all of his matches as quickly and efficiently as possible. Hey, Hiro Senen. Can you give me a copy of your first book? Naruto asked. Don't call me that gaki. But I'm so happy that you're finally becoming a man. Here's a first edition autographed copy of Icha Icha Paradise. Jiraiya cried and I'm tears of joy. Not your first Icha Icha book, you perv. I meant your first ever book the one where my parents named me, Naruto finished in a quiet voice. Oh, I see. Alright, I think I still have my original manuscript for that one. I'm going to give you the last two days before the finals off so you can rest. You can read it then while I help the old man prepare for Suna and Odo, Jiraiya grinned. Naruto read the title of Jiraiya's first book. The Tale of the Utterly Gutsy Ninja, huh? Soon, Kanoha will learn the tale of the Ultra Baddest Ninja, he smirked turning to the first page. There were mutterings in his head from a certain demon fox about it being more like the tale of the utterly stupid brat, but since he didn't ask for that certain demon fox's opinion, they were prompt. The day of the Chunin exam started out normal day in Kanoha. That is if you didn't notice the Anbu in the background preparing for the invasion. 
In the last two days, the third was able to inform all the trusted Anbu and Jonans in the village to prepare for the invasion, as well as secretly prep all the civilian shelters. Gureya was outside of the village working on a lead that he hoped would finally put Arachimaru in his place. But he assured everyone he would be back in time to help with the battle. At the actual Chunin Stadium, the crowd was abuzz with excitement. The Chunin candidates themselves varied in emotion. Tamari and Kankura were anxious about the upcoming invasion. Their brother Gara was excited by the possibility of blood. Shino, Shikamaru, and Niji watched the others with indifference. At the moment, the final three contestants were missing. Everyone expected Sasu to be fashionably late how can you not, considering who his sensei was. The surprise was Naruto. Everyone thought the loud mouth orange brat would be the first to show up. In the cage box, the Kazakiage expressed concern over the Acheha. Hokage don't know it seems like the Acheha is missing, Arachimaru stated. Oh, I'm sure all the candidates will show up in due time. After all, they don't want to be disqualified from these exams now do they? Sirotobi chuckled. Perhaps we should give the Acheha extra time should he need it, the Kazakiage suggested. You seem rather infatuated with one of my gen and Kazakiage don't know, the third gave the Arachimaru in disguise a curious look. So many people came here today to see him compete. It would be a shame for him to disqualify it, he explained. I see. But it's still my call to make. If he's late, he'll be disqualified. Besides, his match isn't until much later, so I doubt he'll be late, said the Sandame. You were never very subtle Arachimaru, he thought to himself. Five minutes before the start of the first match, the two Kanoha Sharingan users showed up via Leaf Shunshin. The Kashi Sensei or Sakura screamed from the stands. Early? She asked confused by the odd occurrence. Many of the other Jonin sitting next to her were also confused. Kakashi's early? Kurinai asked. She then put her hands together to try to dispel the Jinjutsu. It didn't work. Well at least he's still reading Icha Icha, so I guess that's still normal, right? Asuma sweat dropped. Sasu kun looks so cool. Ino shouted blushing. Well, it seems like certain people are happy that you've arrived, huh Sasuke? Kakashi teased with his face in his book. The Ichiha chose to ignore the joke and instead search out his blonde teammate who strangely wasn't here. Kakashi, looks like you've had quite the effect on the dope, Sasuke smirked. Kakashi simply waved off the jibe at his punctuality with a one-eyed smile, oh, he'll be here. He probably wants to make an entrance. Sounds like the dope wants to show Sasuke began until he heard a crackle of lightning. Off. He smirked. This was going to be interesting. But the second crackle of lightning, Naruto arrived via lightning shunshin dressed in black anbu attire underneath a long orange cloak decorated with black flame motifs reminiscent of another certain blonde Konohanin. The Kashi sensei you're really? Naruto's eyes bugged out as he pointed a shaking finger at his older brother figure. The Kashi simply waved at Naruto as he continued to read his prized Icha Icha. Oh hello Naruto, I told Sasuke here that you'd be on time. Naruto then looked to Sasuke for answers with a finger still pointed at Kakashi. The Ichiha simply shrugged. That new outfit better not be all for show because I expect to meet you in the finals, Sasuke said. Oh, I'll be there. I hope you can handle a little tanuki, Naruto grinned. All Naruto got in response was a grunt. Everyone in the stadium besides Kakashi, Sasuke, and the Sandane was shocked that was Naruto. When did Naruto get so hot? Ino asked from the stands. I don't know, Sakura answered. You know, I've only ever known one other person to wear a coat like that Asuma said. Yeah, and that was a lightning shunshin as well. Was he really the dead last of the academy? Kurinai asked. Ha. Ah. I knew I made the right decision to place my money the Gaki. Anko said walking over to the group. He's totally going to cream them. Are you sure? I mean he beat Kiba, but for him to get past Niji might be a stretch, Kurinai said. Oh, I bet he has quite a few surprises in store for us. He always seems to have something up his sleeve, Anko grinned taking a seat. Genma Shiranui came forward and called the beginning of the finals of the Chunin exams. Uzumaki Naruto vs Hyuga Niji will now begin. All other participants please move to the viewing box to await your match. Sasuke and Naruto nodded to each other before Sasuke walked away. Kakashi simply shunshined up to the stands and took a seat near his fellow Jonin. The Kashi sensei. Sakura screamed, happy to see her sensei after a month absence. Hello, Sakura. How have you been? Kakashi asked with a one-eyed smile. I've been good. How was your training with Sasuke Kun and Naruto? She asked. Sasuke is as ready as he can possibly be for his match against Gara, the Jonin said in a cheerful tone. As for Naruto, I can't tell the true extent of his skills because I didn't train him, he said. But I can say with confidence that he won't have a problem making Chunin in this exam. This surprised everyone except Anko who was now more confident than ever in her bet. But how can he improve so much in just one month? Kurinai asked. Let's just say that Naruto has more potential than anyone in this generation. And he's finally realized it, Kakashi said in a rather calm tone. 
but he was never any good at the academy. He was a dead last. How could he have more potential than Sasu Kun? Ino asked. This time Asuma answered. There were certain circumstances that prevented Naruto from succeeding in the academy. All the Jonins immediately knew that he was referring to the hate he received for being the Kaiubi's host. What circumstances? Sakura asked. It's Naruto's secret to tell, Kakashi answered. If you want to know, you'll have to ask him. Do you really think Naruto will beat everyone that easily? Kurinai asked again. Oh, I have no doubt that he will. If Naruto really wanted to go all out, he'd be able to beat me as well, Kakashi said as he took out Icha Icha tactics. What? You can't be serious Kakashi. You're the strongest jonin in this village. Naruto can't be that strong. Kurinai said in disbelief. Oh, I'm very serious, he calmly stated with his head in his book. Everyone was now very interested in what Naruto could do. Back at the battlefield, Niji arrogantly stared at Naruto thinking this was the same dead last he had heard about. Naruto on the other hand stared at Niji impassively. You should give up now. It is your fate to lose to me today, Niji preached. Naruto simply raised his right eyebrow. I know about your dream to be Hokage. You are a fool to believe a dead last like you can become Hokage, Niji sneered. Naruto lowered his right eyebrow only to raise his left. Hajim? Genma said shouted. The second the match began, Naruto took one step towards Niji and disappeared into thin air. Startled, Niji activated his Byakugan just in time to see Naruto come at him head on with a roundhouse kick. At the last second, Niji had to block the kick with his left forearm. The second the kick made contact, the bandages on his forearm exploded and blood gushed out. The silence in the stadium allowed Niji's scream to echo. That was wind manipulation. Asuma screamed dropping the cigarette from his mouth. What? Ino and Sakura asked simultaneously. Wind manipulation works by making your chakra as thin and sharp as possible. By channeling wind chakra into his kick, Naruto was able to turn Niji's arm into a bloody mess. Kakashi, how was Naruto able to learn to manifest his wind chakra in such a way? Most Futen users are never able to do such a thing, a disbelieving Asuma asked. But you'll have to ask Naruto-sensei, Kakashi simply answered with his head in his Icha Icha book. What I want to know is how he was able to move so fast. It was like he teleported right in front of Niji, Kurinai mused. That would be one of the jutsu he created. He calls it Shunpo, flash step. He channels a large of chakra on the soles of his feet. So whenever he takes a step and pushes off on the soles of his feet, he can basically jump to a location, Kakashi explained. That's amazing. How much chakra does the jump require? Anko asked. Naruto estimates every 5 meters traveled costs about as much chakra as a cage bushin, Kakashi answered. Wow, that much chakra. That's amazing that he can create such a jutsu, Kurinai said. Wow, Naruto's so strong now Sakura mumbled thinking about how weak she was compared to her teammates. Oh, he hasn't even begun to show anything yet, Kakashi mused. But we probably won't see any more this match because Niji's lost an arm already. For the first time that match, Naruto talked, unless fate can heal your arm, I think you've lost here Niji. How can you be so strong? You were the worst student in your class. Niji screamed still holding his bleeding arm. There's no such thing as fate Niji. We decide our own destinies. I used to be a dead last knucklehead that couldn't even do a simple bushin. But one thing I always had was a dream to be Hokage. Everyone in my class laughed at me, everyone scorned me, and everyone ridiculed me. But I never gave up. To me it was a dream worth chasing after, a dream worth striving for, a dream worth fighting for. Now, I stand before you the strongest genin in this tournament. He took a step forward. Now, I stand before you no longer the dead last everyone thought I'd be. Another step. Now, I stand before you as someone who spit in the face of fate. And then he disappeared. Naruto appeared in front Niji and launched him into the air with a spinning heel kick. The crowd watched in awed silence as Niji's unmoving body was launched several feet into the air and dropped back down to the ground with dull thud. Naruto walked over to Niji's unmoving body and sat down next to his head. You've been trying to fight fate as well haven't you Niji? I know about the caged bird seal. One day, you'll be able to defy your fate as well you just have to keep fighting. Getting that stick out of your ass won't hurt either, he joked. Shousa, Yuzumaki Naruto. There were several seconds of stunned silence as the crowd tried to comprehend what had just occurred. Slowly, the applause came starting in the general vicinity of Anko, Kakashi, and the other Jonin senseis. What happened to that noisy orange knucklehead a month ago? Kankuro asked. That was what the majority of the prospective Chunin wanted to know. It seems he has gotten much stronger, Shino said. Man I didn't think this guy could get any more troublesome, but it appears I was wrong, Shikamaru groaned. Then he noticed that Sasuke wasn't all that surprised at Naruto's newfound strength. You don't seem surprised by your teammate's performance. We might have sparred in the last month, Sasuke said cryptically. That blonde seems to be very strong, Hokage Dono, muttered Orochimaru. 
My seal should have weakened him, not strengthened him. What happened? Yes. Naruto was always Konoha's most surprising ninja. I dare say this is his greatest surprise yet. Saratobi smiled. Even with his new powers, I highly doubt he'll be able to defeat my son Gara or Uchiha, the Kazuki had stated matter-of-factly. We'll have to see, won't we? Maybe he'll surprise you as well, the third said. Leave it to Orochimaru to underestimate the power of hard work. Naruto realized that the eyes of everyone in the stadium were on him as he walked back to towards the other genin. As he reached his fellow competitors, he immediately realized that they were weary of him. Surprising, it was Subaku no Tamari who broke the silence. I see the month of training paid off. Orange isn't as much a fashion disaster anymore, is it? Naruto joked. No, it's still ugly, she smirked. Well, I still have a few more matches to change your mind, don't I? Naruto returned her smirk. If Naruto's new powers confused people, his familiarity with Subaku no Tamari left everyone absolutely dumbfounded. Kankuro's eyes bugged out as he stared stupidly at his older sister and the leaf genin. Naruto noticed Sasuke staring at him with a raised eyebrow. What, team? The Ichiha simply head nodded towards the sand Kanoichi silently asking what was going on between them. I'll tell you later, Naruto said. The raven-haired boy just nodded and looked back at the battlefield in anticipation for the next match. The second match between Subaku no Kankuro and Aburam Shino will now Genma started. I forfeit. Kankuro screamed. He didn't want to show off any of his abilities before the invasion. His forfeit definitely piqued the interest of his fellow genin. Something's not right here, Shino and Shikamaru both thought. Very well. The winner by forfeit is Aburam Shino. The next match will now commence. Well looks like you're up team. You think you can handle the tanuki? Naruto asked. I remember the plan, he drawled as he walked toward the battlefield. He thought back to his spar against Naruto a few weeks ago and to his part in this invasion. Flashback, what the hell was that dope? How can you be that fast? Screamed a bloodied and dazed Sasuke. That was a new move I created just a few days ago, the blonde said calmly. Teach me it. No Sasuke. You don't have enough chakra to use this technique effectively. Enough. Naruto's right. You don't have the chakra capacity to use that technique for any reasonable amount of time or distance, Kakashi intervening before Sasuke could retort. A frustrated cry, Sasuke walked away from the training ground. Naruto wanted to follow, but Kakashi raised a hand to stop him. Let him cool off a little before talking to him again, he said to which Naruto could only nod. You've gotten really strong since the last time I saw you Naruto. I'd have a hard time keeping up with that technique even with the Sherigan. Thanks, but it's not complete yet. I've been experimenting and I think I can go faster if I channeled wind chakra instead of just regular chakra, Naruto stated. Just be careful, wind is known to be a very dangerous element to play around with. This tiniest of mistakes can be disastrous. I know, he said as he walked off to find Sasuke. Ten minutes later, he found Sasuke sitting against a tree tending to his wounds. He sat down near another tree facing him. After several moments of silence between the two, well, how are you going to do it? Do you have a plan? What plan? Sasuke asked. Itachi is an S-ranked ninja. You need a plan if you are going to kill him. Have you ever looked up his profile in the bingo book? The lack of answer was all that Naruto needed to know. Itachi's biggest weakness is his below average stamina. His biggest strengths are his ninjutsu and jinjutsu from his shuriken. If you want to take him down, your best bet would be find a way to slow down his two strengths with your own ninjutsu and shuriken and just outlast him in a war of attrition. Sasu could only gape at the advice he was getting from his blonde teammate, it sounded like it could work. I would recommend gaining a familiarity with earth jutsu to protect yourself against his fire and water jutsu, training your shuringan to nullify high-level jinjutsu, and gaining strength, speed, and chakra capacity to outlast him. Why are you helping me? Sasuke asked. I didn't ask you for your help. We're teammates, Naruto said as if that answered everything. I don't need your help. This is something I have to do on my own. Why does it have to be that way? Because this is my clan my responsibility. He exclaimed. And then what? What are you going to do after you kill your brother? Are you going to follow in his footsteps and be a missing nin of Konoha? Are you also going to hunger for power as well? Because that's the path you seem to be walking down towards right now, Naruto asked. I am nothing like him. Really? All you seem to care about in life is killing him. At this rate, you'd willingly give in to the power of Orochimaru's cursed seal for more power. At this rate, you'd probably sacrifice your own teammates if it meant a chance at Itachi. And at this rate, you'd just end up replacing Itachi with another power-hungry Itachi. There was no outburst this time on the Ichiha's part. You have a lot more in life to live for than just revenge. You have a chance here to rebuild the Ichiha into a powerful world-renowned clan once again. Let the Ichiha once again be known as the clan of great and powerful ninja, not a clan of traitors who only strive for power. We'll both rebuild our clans. Again silenced reigned. 
What do you know about clan restoration anyway? Sasuke finally asked. Nothing to be honest, Naruto answered with a sigh. And seeing as we are both orphans, I guess we'll both figure it out along the way together. You have a clan, dope. Sasuke smirked. As a matter of fact, I do you arrogant asshole, Naruto smiled in reply. The Uzumaki clan once ruled Yuzushi Agakur. We were renowned for our skill in Fuenjutsu, our incredible longevity, life force, and ridiculous chakra reserves. What happened to them then? They were destroyed sometime during the Second Shinobi World War. I see, Sasuke said in a low voice. So we are both the last of our once proud clans, Naruto. We'll have our first chance at recognition in a few weeks, Naruto started. During the Chunin exam finals, there's going to be an invasion led by Rachimaru, Odo, and Suna. What? Asked Sasuke clearly surprised. Ureya of the sand and believes the snake is manipulating the sand into attacking us. That's why they brought their Jinchuriki to these exams. Jinchuriki. It literally means power of human sacrifice. It is the term given to people who have one of the nine-tailed beasts sealed within them. Jinchuriki often possess immense chakra reserves and destructive powers. As a result, all of them are hated, feared, and oftentimes shunned by enemy and ally alike. Tailed beasts. You mean like the Kaiubi? Sasuke asked. At Naruto's nod, he asked another question. Let me guess, Gar is their Jinchuriki. Another nod. Great. That should be fun, Sasuke sucked his teeth. But not up to the challenge of subduing him. Naruto joked. Don't worry about me, dope. I'll get the job done. What are you going to do? Sasuke retorted. At this, Naruto was silent for a moment. Jinchuriki are often known as army destroyers. We are being invaded by two different villages. And while you may be able to nullify their trump card, we'll still one of our own to hold back the forces of two nations. I see, Sasuke frowned. That's why the villagers hate you and call you demon behind your back. Yes, it's an S-rank secret punishable by death that I'm the Jinchuriki of the Kaiubi. Like many of my brethren, I am hated, shunned, and feared by our own village. From what I hear, Gara has had multiple assassination attempts on his life by his own father the Kazakiage. People are stupid, he said simply. For once, we agree team, Naruto grinned. Seeing Kakashi walk over to them, well, looks like it's back to training for us. Your mission for the Chunin exams is to subdue and detain Gara to prevent him from taking part in the invasion, you think you can handle it. Who think you are talking to? Sasuke smirked getting up. I'm taking on one genin. You're going to fight an entire army, can you handle it? I guess we'll have to see what we. Flashback end, good, Naruto said. As Sasuke walked past, he slipped him one of the chakra suppressing seals from Jiraiya, that might come in handy. The Ichiha simply nodded in acknowledgement and continued on as if nothing had happened. The match between Ichiha Sasuke and Sabaku no Gara will now begin. Shouted Genma. The match began as Naruto thought it would. With the speed training help Sasuke got from Kakashi and himself, Sasuke was able to get past Gara's sand defense with relative easy as Lee did. Two swift body blow kicks and one punch to the face was all it took to put Gara on the defensive. Gar immediately retracted all his sand and formed a protective cocoon around himself. The defense proved too strong even for Sasuke's most powerful Katen Jutsu. So, he was left with just one option the Chidori. Backing up all the way up the wall opposite Gara, he formed the hand signs. Ushiyu Seru. He held his left hand as the lightning chakra started to form around it. Soon, it became visible and it emitted a high frequency chirping noise. And then he charged. With his Sharingan active, he could see all the counterattacks Gara used with his sand. As expected, the Chidori pirated right through Gara's cocoon. At the sight of his own blood, Gara went into a panic attack. Mother, what is this? Is this my blood? It's my blood. He screamed as the sand cocoon around him began to crumble. That was the opening Sasuke needed as he rushed in and placed the chakra suppressing seal on Gara's forehead. What is this seal? Why can't I hear mother? Mother, where are you? Gara screamed. Again, Sasuke took advantage of Gara's delirium. This time he moved behind Gara and knocked him out with a chop to the neck. Gara. Tamari screamed. And with that, the Kabuto released a Jinjutsu through the stadium the invasion had begun. The Sand and Odo Ninja disguised as Anbu attacked led by Baki. The Konoha Ninja engaged. And Orochimaru revealed himself to be the Kazakiage as his sound force set up a barrier in preparation for his fight against his sensei. Hello Orochimaru. It's nice of you to reveal yourself, the Sandium said. I see. So you were expecting this invasion. No matter, Kanahagakur will fall today and you along with it. The Snake Sanin laughed. Not if I have anything to say about it. As Sasuke began to wrap the now unconscious Gara in ninja wire, Tamari and Kankuro tried to intervene. Get away from him. Kankuro cried. As Tamari was about to unseal her fan, she heard a flash and a voice from behind her. Sorry, Tamari-chan. I can't let you free your brother. And with one chop to her neck she too was now unconscious. You. Kankuro faced the blonde trying to unseal Crow. 
But he was too slow as Sasuke was able to subdue him with a punch to the gut. Shino. Grab Shikamaru and come help Sasuke take these three to Anbu headquarters. Naruto commanded. Troublesome I was hoping to pretend like I was taken out by the Jinjutsu, said Shikamaru. But he and Shino nonetheless came to help. As the three Kanoha Jenin were about to move out, they were surrounded by several San Jonin. You're not going anywhere, said Baki. You three go. I'll take the things here, Naruto said releasing all his weights and gravity seal. Shikamaru raised his eyebrow at that. You sure you can handle this Naruto? At this, another presence appeared with one hand on Naruto's shoulder. He'll be fine. I'm here now, said the perverted toad sage. It is of the utmost importance that Gara does not get free. Do you understand me? The Ichiha, the Nara, and the Aburam nodded and sped off. I see you're right on time, Naruto joked. Was your mission successful? It was. The snake's in for a nasty surprise, Jiraiya grinned. Once I'm done here, I'll help get rid of those snakes and... No. I'll take care of the snakes and the Odo army. You make sure Jiji ends the slimy snake once for all, Naruto decreed. Jiraiya raised an eyebrow, are you sure? You only have three minutes at most. It'll have to be enough, Naruto evenly responded. All right. I'll cover you while you get ready. Just be careful. I want there to be something left of Uzumaki Naruto to train after this, Jiraiya said giving Naruto a little shove in the back. Go. Naruto nodded and took a few steps back away from the other ninja as he began to channel a massive amount of wind chakra. All right, Kurama. Juice me. You sure three minutes will be enough? Your body can't handle the speed and power of that technique for longer than that. The Kai would be asked. It will be because it must be. All right, good luck, kid. Insert bleach ost. Invasion begin. As the Biju Chakra washed over Naruto, the fighting throughout the stadium seemed to slow down to take in the sight that was the Kaiubi Jinchuriki. Soon, the ground underneath him began to crumble as Naruto's wind chakra became visible on his body. The loud bell like screech was deafening and seemed to stop all fighting in the area. Futen. Kei's Kaminakari. Wind release. Wrath of the Wind God screamed a Kaiubi Naruto. Naruto flashed from the stadium to the gates of Kanoha, leaving a trail of destruction in his path. Jiraiya smirked as he watched his godson go. Naruto, show the world one more time why it only takes one Namakas to destroy an army. Naruto arrived right within the middle of the Odo army by slamming one of its ninja's face into the ground. He flashed killing another with a kick through the stomach. Another flash, this time decapitating several ninja with a lariat. The Odo ninja began to panic. Their comrades were being methodically cut down and there was nothing they could do about it. All they could do was watch as the blur of white and orange decimated them. Seconds later, the body count reached several dozen. Then the hundreds. Two minutes and twelve seconds later, the Odo army was no more. But the Odo army gone, the Kanoha forces would be able to hold off the Suna ninja. Now, it was time to deal with the three snake summons. Gather a large amount of wind chakra into his right arm, he flashed and rammed his arm through one of Orochimaru's unnamed snake summons. Forty seconds left. Naruto had to flash to the roof of a nearby house to escape the bites of the other two snakes. He was beginning to feel the toll his jutsu was having on his body. His 12-year-old body was just not strong enough to handle the speed that the jutsu allowed him to move at, and definitely not strong enough to handle the pressure of sustaining the massive amount of wind chakra cloaking him. 25 seconds left. Once again, the snakes tried to strike Naruto. This time, he was prepared. Taking in a breath of air, he performed three quick hand seals. Futen. Shinkuha. Wind release. Vacuum wave he screamed. The sheer amount of wind chakra put into that jutsu was enough to completely split the snake in half. Fifteen seconds left. Now, Naruto was beginning to pant, and the fatigue was beginning to overwhelm him. His muscles just wouldn't move, and the cloak of wind chakra was beginning to thin out. As the last snake summoned coiled its head and prepared to strike, he considered his limited options. His body wouldn't be able to flash not anymore. Anything else would cause irreparable damage to his young body by tearing his muscles apart. Ten seconds left. Humming to a decision, Naruto channeled all his remaining wind chakra and willed his muscles to perform the necessary hand seals. Tora. The snake was 50 meters away from him. Ushi. 25 meters away. Inu. The snake's mouth now had him surrounded. You. The snake clamped down onto Naruto. Me. Futen. Datapa. Wind release. Great breakthrough he exclaimed. Wind chakra burst out warded from Naruto. Almost instantly, the snake's head exploded from the pressure. Naruto stood on top of the rubble that used to be a house where the snake summon's head was supposed to be. His orange coat now painted red as he teetered on the edge of unconsciousness. Two minutes 57 seconds, Naruto said collapsing onto his knees. Mission complete, he smiled letting the darkness claim him. Leech Ost. Invasion end. Uraya smiled as he saw the last of the snake summons fall to his godson. He's going to surpass all of us one day soon, Minato. I hope you're proud of him. I know I am. 
with Naruto single-handedly taking out the Odo army and Orochimaru's snake summons, the rest of Konoha's forces should be able to hold the defensive line against the invading sand. Now, for the final loose end. Creating a cage Bushin to collect his godson, he shunshine to the barrier the Sound 4 had set up for Orochimaru. Several Anbu arrived to greet him on the rooftop. Jiraiya-sama, the four Odo ninja created a barrier that prevents us from helping Hokage-sama. Anyone who tries to enter is immediately engulfed in flames. The ninja themselves are protected by another barrier behind them. I see. Interesting as he examined the barrier. Each member takes a corner and powers a portion of the shield. But if we were to incapacitate just one of the four, the barrier would immediately crumble, he mused. Sensei can take care of himself against the snake. Orochimaru's own arrogance will be the end of him, he smiled. I want all of you to be prepared to apprehend those four when Orochimaru makes a break for it. But Jiraiya Sama, the Hokage and Anbu started. We'll be fine, Jiraiya replied calmly. I have a special surprise for the snake. It seems Konoha still stands strong, my student, remarked the elderly Hokage. It matters not. I will still kill you today. Even if my fire is extinguished today, the will of fire will still burn strong. That was one thing you've never learned, and that was why I could never have chosen you as my successor. Silence. This is your end sensei. Kuchius. Ito tensei. Screamed the snake Sanon. At the clap of his hands, three coffins appeared marked one, two, and four respectively. Immediately, Hiruzen knew what his student was planning. Arachimaru. You dare desecrate the past cages of this village. Ah. So, you know of this jutsu. Then you already know that you have no chance against me now, grinned the snake as the Shadame and Nidame walked out of their coffins. It seemed Minato's sacrifice to the Shinigami made him ineligible for subjugation under Ito Tensei. Hello Saratobi. You've gotten quite old, remarked Hashirama. It seems we've been summoned through use of my Ito Tensei. Such insolence. Said Tabarama. Never in my years had I ever thought we would be forced to do battle. Please forgive me, Saratobi frowned. Yes Sensei. With their help, my revenge will be complete, Arachimaru laughed as he placed the kunai talismans inside the reanimated hokages. This is the end for you Saratobi sen His rant was interrupted by a punch in the face from the Shadame and a kick in the stomach from the Nidame. Right outside the barrier, Jiraiya had the biggest shit-eating grin to ever exist on his face. How dare you? With those talismans you should be under my control. Cried Arachimaru. It appears someone got to our bodies first and prevented you from controlling us, smirked Taburama. Now, you shall pay for what you've done. Mokuten Hijutsu. Jukai Koten. Wood release secret technique. Nativity of a world of trees cried Hashirama as wood began to grow on top of the roof. This is bad. I could take down Sensei one on one, but with both the first and second Hokages, reanimated and out of my control, there's no way I could possibly win this one. Abarama looked back at now brain dead and utterly confused third. Saratobi, I know you're old now, but shouldn't you be doing something? That man was your student, was he not? He joked. Right Sensei, snapping out of his stupor. Performing a few quick hand seals, Katen. Karyu Enden. Fire release. Fire Dragon Flame Bullet. Arachimaru was narrowly able to escape his sensei's jutsu, but failed to notice the wood vine that had now wrapped itself around his left ankle. With one tug, the snake Sanin crashed onto the roof as more and more vines sought to restrain him. Forming only one hand seal, Taburama sought to drown the snake, Suetan. Suryadan. Water release. Water Dragon Bullet A massive swell of water formed into a dragon and launched itself at the restrained Arachimaru. The attack left a bloodied and severely injured Orochimaru still being held back by the Shadame's wood vines. As the three cages prepared for the final assault, they witnessed a pale arm shoot out of Orochimaru's mouth. Then another. And then a head. Finally, a newly healed Orochimaru crawled out of his previous body. Orochimaru, you have truly become a monstrosity. His sensei yelled. Quickly. Lower the barrier now. We have to retreat. Orochimaru ordered his sound for ignoring his sensei. The four Odo ninja did as told. They dropped the barrier and activated their cursed seals, hoping to draw on enough power to cover their master's escape. The combined power of four level two cursed seals provided power necessary to hold off the wood vines that sought to capture their master again. This gave Orochimaru the milliseconds necessary to meld himself to the ground and disappear to fight another day. He may have lost his elite bodyguards, but that was a far better option than losing his own life at the hands of the first three hokages. After the sound four had been captured, Jiraiya walked over to his sensei who was talking to his own teachers. Hello sensei. Shadame. Nidame, he bowed his head at the two reanimated hokages. Senseis meet another of my students. This is Jiraiya, Saratobi introduced. Jiraiya, what is the state of Konoha? All the civilians have been evacuated behind the hokage monument. The sand forces have been pushed back outside our gates. And the Odo forces are no more, the toad sage answered. No more? The elderly hokage asked stunned. On. 
massacred. Wiped off the face of the world, he answered. E but how? At this, Jiraiya grinned. It only takes one Namekas to destroy an army. Saratobi's mouth hung open for one moment before he let out perhaps the heartiest laugh he's had in years. Minato, your son is going to shatter your legend. I'm sorry, but who is this Namekas? Asked Habarama. His name is Namekas Uzumaki Naruto, a genin who took part in the Chunin exams in this very stadium before the invasion began. He also bears the same burden your wife did Shadame sama answered Hiruzen. I see. I must meet this boy, replied Hashirama his interest piqued. I as well. Jinchuriki or not, to take out an entire army at such a young age is astounding. Truly, you have kept the will of fire strong in our absence, Siratobi, said the Nadame. Yes, the will of fire burns strong in young Naruto, smiled the professor. The legend of Namika's Yuzumaki Naruto was born today. And one day soon, his legacy will outshine all of ours. I see. The boy has been hated his entire life hasn't he? Frowned Hashirama. Saratobi and Jiraiya had just finished recounting the events since the Second Shinobi World War, including Naruto's life in the village hidden in the leaves, the events of the other Shinobi World Wars, the Kaiubi attack, the Achiha massacre, and Orochimaru's recent invasion to the Senju brothers. Needless to say they weren't pleased at the behavior of the village they had built together. It is disheartening to see such mistreatment of a young boy for something out of his control. His own father had made him the Jinchuriki hoping to save the village. Yes soon after I made the decision to grant Minato's final wish, I knew it was a mistake. He believed that one day, his village would be able to see past the Kaiubi and treat his son fairly. Perhaps that day is today, but it didn't come fast enough to leave Naruto unscarred, said a saddened Sandame. Your successor must have truly loved this village Hiruzen. The faith he put in them and his son speaks volumes to that, said Tabarama. Minato always said, the fire's shadow illuminates the village Jiraiya smiled at the memory of his student. His prowess on the battlefield was on a level not seen since Yurira Sensei's, Siratobi commented. Indeed. Becoming Hokage before 30, taking space-time ninjutsu to heights I would never have thought possible, and the ingenuity behind his few ninjutsu and Rasengan would certainly make him one of the most powerful shinobi to have ever lived, complimented Tabarama. And it seems his son is well on his way to surpassing his legend. Yes, now that I think about it, what are the skills of this young Naruto? Asked Hashirama. Besides having massive reserves for a genin probably more than mine, he has three elemental affinities and decent tune in level to jutsu without enchantments, answered Jiraiya. Three affinities, huh? Used Hashirama. What are they? Wind, lightning, and water. Wind's his strongest right now. Lightning is getting close, but water is still pretty terrible. The brat can't produce enough water to brush his teeth without a body of water nearby, joked Jiraiya. I see. Perhaps, I can help with that. Maybe I can also give the boy an intro space-time ninjutsu, offered the Nadame. I'm sure Naruto would be honored to learn water manipulation and jutsu from you sensei, smiled Siratobi. Now, Jiraiya, what was that jutsu Naruto used to take out the Odo army? All I could tell he was doing gathering an enormous amount of wind chakra. That's right it's called Futen. Kei's Kaminakari Wind Release. Wrath of the Wind God. By gather a massive amount of wind chakra to cloak his body, he is able to move at unimaginable speeds by combining this jutsu with his shunpo technique while making his body into a weapon. Anything he touches basically gets torn to shreds by wind chakra. That sounds somewhat similar to the current Rakage's lightning release armor, but on a much more destructive scale. What are the drawbacks? Asked Hiruzen. He can't maintain it. Simply put, Naruto's 12-year-old body just isn't strong enough to handle it moving at those speeds, or durable enough to handle the pressure of sustaining that amount, wind chakra on the surface of his body. Right now, he can't hold it for more than three minutes, and that's stretching it. It also takes more than a whole cage's worth of chakra to sustain the jutsu for those three minutes, answered Jiraiya. I see. The amount of nature manipulation and chakra necessary easily makes it an S-ranked jutsu. I would like you to place restrictions on how long Naruto can use the jutsu until his body grows up enough, suggested the professor. Jiraiya nodded in agreement. So young and he's already such a technique. And he still hasn't mastered water or the Kaiubi's powers yet. Truly, his potential is frightening, remarked Hashirama. With my brother helping him with water and space-time ninjutsu, perhaps I can help train his biju powers. Now that I think about it, how long are we going to be able to stay in these bodies, brother? Because we are in control of our own bodies, we can dispel ourselves any time we wish. I don't know about you, but I'd like to train the next carrier to the will of fire before passing on again, the younger of the Senju brothers answered. I agree as well, brother. The brighter the future is for this boy, the brighter the future will be for our village. Perhaps, it's time we meet the boy in question, suggested Hashirama. He should be waking up soon. My clone checked out his injuries. He had no physical injuries, just severe cases of muscle fatigue and chakra exhaustion. 
The muscle fatigue will likely keep him bedridden for a few days, but the chakra exhaustion should be cured by now, thanks to his tenant, Jiraiya said. Very well then, let us all go meet our hero, smiled Saratobi. The council meeting can wait. Hey dope. Get up. I know you're awake, commanded Sasuke. Damn it team. Can't a guy rest? I'm so tired I can't even move my head to look at you, responded Naruto from his hospital bed. Why are you here anyway? I thought I'd tell you my mission was a success. Gara is being held at the Anbu Center right now sleeping. According to his siblings, he hasn't slept in years, replied the Ichiha. He'll probably be out for a few days to make up for the insomnia. I see. It's probably the fault of a crappy seal. Soon is not exactly known for its fuinjutsu. Maybe Jiraiya can fix it for him when Suna comes to sign a peace treaty, wondered Naruto. So care to explain to me how you managed to wipe an entire army off the face of the world and only come out of it with muscle fatigue and chakra exhaustion, he interrogated. Maybe I don't wanna, you jerk, the blonde grinned. But after a momentary stare down between the two, he relented, wind nature manipulation on a massive scale and a few dozen shunpos. Well, that explains the white and orange flash all the reports are talking about. How'd you learn both wind and lightning manipulation in one month? Sasu asked, genuinely curious. Page Bushin. I get the memories of each clone after it dispels. If seven clones train for one day, it's the equivalent of training for a week. Sasuke's mouth gaped a little. You think I can learn that? I'd estimate each clone would cost as much chakra as two to three katen. Kakaku fire release. Great fireball jutsus. The sh I wish I had an unlimited amount of chakra stored in my stomach, the Achiha grumbled. You're right. I don't have all seeing eyes that can detect Jinjutsu, that see movement in slow motion, and can copy to Jutsu styles, hand signs, and Ninjutsu. Oh, lucky me. Naruto wailed. HMPH shut up, dope. After a few moments of silence, we'd better have gotten promoted. We both won our matches and played important parts in the invasion. Maybe honestly, I couldn't care less about a promotion, I just want to get back to training. I still have so much to improve on. What else are you still working on? Water manipulation mostly. I can't do water jutsus at all unless I'm near a body of water. If I tried doing one at the Chunin exam stadium, I'd probably only get a puddle of water. Sasuke had to smirk at the last part. After thinking to himself, he reluctantly asked, since, you're supposed to be helping me, got any tips for me? It felt so weird asking Naruto for help. There are plenty of skilled earth jutsu users in Konoha, starting with our very own sensei. Since he has the Sharingan as well, he'll probably have a unique way to help you along in that respect. You should ask Guy for weights to begin your tojutsu training. And for chakra capacity, try jogging while water walking for an hour or two every day. Then work your way up to jogging against the current of a river and eventually up waterfall, the blonde suggested. The Ichiha grunted his usual noncommittal response, but deep down he was glad Naruto had given him such useful advice and had not ridiculed him for asking for help. I'm going to go find Kakashi. Hopefully, he can get me started on Doton. Later, dope. And you'd better get well soon. We still have to finish our fight. Yeah whatever, Team Naruto groaned trying to fall back asleep. Ten minutes later, Naruto was woken up by a bonk on the head. The first thing he saw was Jiraiya standing over his bed with a grin on his face. What the hell Irosenin? You little brat. Not even your dad called me that. Abarama raised an amused eyebrow to Saratobi, Irosenin. The sand aim just put his face in his hands and shook his head as Jiraiya and Naruto continued to argue. Naruto, you can argue with Jiraiya later. There are two people here that would like to meet you. At this, Naruto looked at the other two people in the room. Who are they? Idiot. Do you not know the first two Hokages of your village? Asked Jiraiya. Hey. It's not my fault the academy was boring and people hated me. Besides, how can they be the first two Hokages? They look younger than Jiji, retorted Naruto. Yes. My student Orochimaru brought them back to life using a forbidden jutsu. They wish to see the savior of the village. Also, Hashirama here is actually very familiar with your burden, answered the elderly Hokage. No kidding. I hate his stupid wood jutsus, said Kurama. You captured Kurama with your Mokuten? Naruto asked. Kurama. The Kaiubi has a name? Asked Hashirama. Yeah. The Kaiubi is a title not a name, Naruto answered. I guess you do learn something new every day. My wife was the first ever Jinchuriki of Kurama, and she never learned its name, replied the Shadame. Naruto's eyes widened at that statement. So, why do you guys want to see me? It can't be just because I helped out during the invasion. As a matter of fact, there is, Jiraiya answered. I'm going to be out of the village for a few weeks starting tomorrow. So, I guess you can say I've found some suitable replacements. That's right. I'll be helping you with water manipulation and if we have time, an intro into space-time ninjutsu so you can eventually succeed your father. My brother will help you practice controlling Kurama's chakra, smiled the Nidame. 
Ugh not looking forward to having to deal with Mokuten again after all these years, muttered the Kitsune. Hirama doesn't like the prospect of having to deal with Mokuten again after all these years, Naruto chuckled. I'd imagine no one likes the prospect of getting smothered by wood vines, Suratobi mused. Well then, Naruto come to my office tomorrow morning. I have something to give to you and afterwards, Tabarama sensei can go ahead and start your training. Let's see. We have about an hour before the council meeting today, how about we survey the damage around the city for the time being. I'm sure you wish to see the state of our village after being away so long right senseis. The Senju brothers nodded, while Jiraiya gave off a rather perverse giggle. One hour later, the post-invasion council meeting began. Hiruzen, Kakashi, and Hashirama were present. Surprisingly, Tabarama wasn't there. And Jiraiya was well, Jiraiya. He was likely doing research. Shikaku would you please tell us the state of our forces and the damage to our village? Asked the Sandame. The elder Nara nodded. Because we were prepared for the invasion, we were able to safely move just about all the civilians to safe zones and only suffered minimal ninja losses due to the efficiency at which the enemy forces were eliminated, he said that last part with a shudder. There was some damage to village walls, but that can be repaired with some time. Okajama, is it really wise to allow that boy to be that strong? Asked a random member of the civilian council. As soon as he finished his statement, he experienced a rush of killing intent directed toward him. For the last time, Naruto is not the Kaiubi. I'm sorry if your feeble mind can't comprehend that, responded Kakashi harshly. That is correct. The Jinchuriki are not the same as the Biju sealed inside of them. In fact, the first ever Jinchuriki of the Kaiubi was my wife, Yuzumaki Mido. And I am certain she wasn't the Kaiubi reincarnated, Hashirama said shocking everyone. The boy should be looked at as a hero. Less than an hour of being born into the world, he was tasked with holding back the strongest of all the Biju. He didn't ask this burden, but he has dealt with it for his entire life and will continue to do so. Mido Sama was the first Jinchurki of the Kaiubi? Asked Kaharu. How come we were never told of this? Yes, Mido sealed the Kaiubi inside of her after I released it from Madara's control, after my final battle with him, answered the first. The reason for not telling everyone was twofold. For safety reasons and the fact that many villagers would unjustly believe she was the Kaiubi. I believe I made the right decision if the treatment you all have shown the young boy is any indication. The startling revelation that the demon boy they had despised shared the same burden as their founder's wife weighed heavily on the minds of many members of the council. Moving on, I believe it's time for Chunin promotions. I moved to nominate Ichiha Sasuke, Nara Shikamaru, and Aburam Shino for their successful mission in subduing the children of the former Kazakiage and preventing them from participating in the invasion. I also nominate Yuzumaki Naruto for his efforts in taking out the enemy forces and my former student summons. Are there any objections? Asked a third knowing no one would object to Naruto's promotion now with what his sensei had just revealed about the former Jinchurikis of Konoha. There was still some disagreement on the faces of some of the members of the council, but they couldn't voice them without looking petty and stupid. Seeing as there are no objections, I will award these promising genin later. For now, I assume many wish to know how our former Hokages have returned to life. Yes, how are you living again Shadame Dono? Asked Danzo. It seems we were brought back to life through the use of my brother's Ido Tensei technique by Hiruzen's former student. It was through the work of another of Hiruzen's students that we were no longer under their control, answered Hashirama. Perhaps when my brother and Jurei arrive, we may get answers to how this all happened. After Orochimaru found out that bringing our former Hokages back to life was a bad idea, he was forced to retreat. He left behind his four elite bodyguards dubbed the Sound 4 all four, are currently are being interrogated by Ibiki and Anko, for any useful information they may have on my wayward students' workings, answered Hirzen. And the fate of the children of the Kazakiage. Danzo pressed. It turns out my student killed and has been masking as the Kazakiage for a while. As such, Suna has denied much of the responsibility for their invasion. After things calm down in Suna, they will send a delegation for negotiation. Before Danzo could respond, the door of the council room opened. And Tabarama walked into the council room dragging a bloodied, battered, and unconscious Jureya behind him. I was walking around town and was about to come to this meeting when I noticed your student being chased by several women that he was apparently peeping on in the hot springs, Suratobi, Tabarama smiled. Hiro Senen indeed. At this, the professor gave a frustrated growl and banged his head on his desk. Of course Jureya had to get caught peeping at women with my sensei watching. Paharu, Hamura is that you? It's good to see you again, said the Nadame. Yes, likewise sensei, answered Hamura. At this, Tabarama looked towards the last member of the elder council with a scrutinizing gaze, Danzo, is that you? What happened to your eye and arm? During the second shinobi world war, I was injured fighting against Iwa, he immediately answered. Then why is it that I can sense multiple Sharingan signatures from you? His eyes narrowed. 
Last I heard from Saratobi, the only Sharingan left in the village belonged to one of the genin he just promoted and had a Kakashi. At this, Danzo's visible eye widened. Damn it. I forgot that Sensei was probably the best sensor ninja to ever exist. Danzo what is the meaning of this? Screamed Hirazan. Everything I do is for the good of the village, he answered. And with a wave of his hand, several unidentified Anbu appeared before him. It seems I'll have to move my headquarters. Mokuten. Moku bind a wood release. Wood bind. As the wood technique moved toward the root Anbu, Danzo's bandages ripped as his wood cells came to protect him from the shot aim's own, knocking the other two elders from the table. What? Mokuten. Danzo, how could you betray Kanoha like this? As I've said, everything I've done has been for the betterment of the vill, Danzo insisted. Guchius. Gamaguchi Shibari summoning. Toad mouth bind. Jiraiya screamed apparently recovered from his injuries at the hands of righteous feminine fury. There's no way out of this Danzo, surrender yourself. Rasengan. He said taking out one of Danzo's root operatives. Never. Rikiri lightning cutter. With Jiraiya, Saratobi, and the first two Hokages distracting the root Anbu, the Team 7 Jonin was able to attack Danzo head on. With one swift jab, he was able to cleave Danzo's Sharingan arm right off. Without his right Sharingan and wood release arm, he had nothing that could stop the Shadames Mokuten Jutsu from binding him. Take Danzo and his root ninja to Ibiki and remove his last Sharingan eye. Ordered the Sandame. He will be executed for treason. Hiruzen don't you think this is a little rash? Asked Hamura. No, I've had enough of Danzo's schemes. Years ago, I told him to disband Root, but it appears he went behind my back then. And he had the audacity to experiment on himself with Sharingan eyes and Hashirama's cells. No, this isn't rash I should have done this years ago. I believe this meeting is over, we have more important things to worry about, said a rather disturbed Jiraiya. The rest of the council could only nod and move to leave the room. Hours late, the Hokages, Jiraiya, and Kakashi returned to the Sandame's office to discuss the fate of one Danzo Shimura. Saratobi, what are you going to do with Danzo? Asked Habarama. He has committed many treasonous deeds in the name of our village's safety. Will you execute him? I'm afraid I will have to do so and in a swift fashion, the aged Hokage said in a pained voice. The only way for Danzo to have gotten away with this level of treachery is to have several of his operatives in high places all over this village. I can't imagine Danzo or his root will be happy staying in prison. And even if he no longer has his Sharingan eyes that he stole from the dead Ichiha or the cells from Sadame Sama, he is still a dangerous person to allow to live. He will attempt to break out in one way or another. And when he does so, he will attempt either a coup or will flee the village with his forces. Then it sounds like the best solution to this problem will be to eliminate him. How unfortunate he was never this insubordinate when we were alive, I wonder what changed and caused him to do these acts, Hashirama thought out loud. I believe this all began when I was appointed as the Sandame Hokage by you sensei, he looked towards the Nidame. He was thought himself as my rival at everything. But when I was appointed to this position, I guess something broke inside of him, and he has been after my job ever since. The fact that he never officially disbanded Rude only proves that he planned to one day take the title of Hokage using underhanded tactics. Yes, the fact that he had his destroyed right eye replaced with a Manjekyo Sharingan is disturbing. Not many Ichiha awaken those cursed eyes. Do you know whose eyes he took? Asked the Nidame. Yes. I know exactly whose eyes he took and for that reason, I personally had to destroy that particular eye. It once belonged to a young man named Shisui Ichiha, who was a prodigy that few rivaled. His Manjekyo has a frightening power known as Kotamatsukami. This technique allows the user to enter a person's mind and manipulate them by giving them false experiences, making it seem as if they were doing things on their own free will, Sarito answered. It is not difficult to see why Danzo would covet that eye. That eye would explain how he could get away with his schemes for so long, spoke Jiraiya. It's truly a frightening power. And the fact that took them off the dead is inexcusable. It makes you wonder whether he had a hand in their attempted coup before young Itachi stepped in, the Sandame wondered. Wait. The Ichiha planned a coup. Kakashi asked. Yes, the Ichiha planned a coup because of the way they were treated. Many were suspicious of them because only the Sharingan could control the Kaiubi. I tried to reason with them before it was too late, but my teammates and Danzo all thought it would be best to simply destroy the clan rather than let Kanoha suffer from civil war. I imagine Danzo hoped the civil war would give him the chance to take the title of Hokage. He could discredit me by saying that I let things progress this far, and if he could quell the coup with his root, he'd be a shoe in for Godaim. But Itachi cared far too much for this village to allow such a thing to happen. Instead, he took it upon himself to deal with his own clan, sparing only his own brother. I guess since he couldn't get the Ichihaku to start, he decided to make the most of it by harvesting the eyes of the deceased, Kakashi continued. But that train of thought, it wouldn't be much of a stretch to claim that he also helped Rachimaru into this village. 
Someone had to help him get the DNA of Shadam Sama and Nidam Sama, Jureya added. And it was Arachimaru's plan originally to take you out Sensei, meaning there would be a need for a new Hokage after the invasion ended. Tsuritobi simply shook his head sadly. How could you have fallen so far Danzo? After doing these things, I believe the only option has to be to execute him quickly, since we don't know the extent of his control over your forces Siratobi. It's likely many of his operatives are planning his escape even now, Hashirama stated. Yes, Danzo Shimura shall be executed at dawn today, stated Siratobi. But I wish to be there at his execution. As do I, said Tabarama. The next afternoon, we find our favorite orange-loving hero still asleep in his bed. By his side though was the shy Hayuga Hinata. She was in the hospital because some of her injuries were aggravated during the invasion. She was allowed to leave a few hours ago, but she had come across her crush's hospital room and had decided to stay with him until he woke up in order to express her gratitude for what he had done for Niji. Last night, her older cousin had come to apologize to her for what he had done. Apparently, her father had come clean and told him the true events that had caused his father's death. It was a stunning revelation for Niji, and he realized most of his misgivings about the main family were simply clouded conclusions he made because of the anger he felt for his father's death. Niji said that after his beating at the hands of Naruto, he realized that there was no such thing as fate. People made their own decisions in life as his own father had done. She in turn told him of her dream to become strong enough to claim the leadership of the clan and do away with the cage bird seal and reunite both parts of the family. Needless to say, Niji was shocked about her dream and was absolutely dumbfounded when she asked for his help in making this dream come true. But in the end, he had agreed and the two had never been on better terms with each other. Anada was broken from her train of thought when she saw Sakura enter Naruto's room. The pink-haired girl had been mostly unharmed from the invasion. With Naruto taking care of the Odo army and the snake summons, she and many of the other genin had an easy time evacuating the civilians. Oh hello Hinata. What are you doing here? Sakura asked noticing Hinata sitting by Naruto's hospital bed. I I, I am here to tt thank NN and Naruto-kun for HH helping my cousin Niji, she stuttered. Naruto helped Niji. The pink-haired girl asked incredulously. I wouldn't call beating the crap out Niji helping him. NNN no it was because of his defeat that Niji was able to put his past behind him, Hinata answered trying to get rid of her stutter. It would not be good for her to stutter in front of her crush when he woke up. AA are you also here to see him as well? Yes. I haven't been able to see either of my teammates since the preliminaries. Sasu-kun has a meeting with the Hokage soon. I think he's going to be promoted to Chunin. She screamed that last part. Then NNN Naruto-kun should also be promoted for what he did as well, the Hayuga stated. Yeah, he should. Can you believe how strong he's gotten? He's stronger than Sasu-kun now. Naruto-kun has always been strong. He just needed the chance to show everyone his strength, she said without the stutter. After all, it was Naruto who had inspired her to strive to become stronger. What? But Naruto's always been the class dope how could he be so strong? Sakura nearly screamed. Ugh can you guys keep it down? I'm trying to sleep here, groaned the now waking Naruto. What do you guys want? He asked sitting up. Hey. The least you can do is be a little polite. I came here to see if you were okay she started. You mean you came to see me only after finding out Sasu-kun was busy with something else, right? Naruto finished. Sakura blushed a little, proving Naruto's assumptions correct. So, what brings you here, Hinata? I just wanted to ttt thank you for helping Niji deal with his fate problem Naruto-kun, she was trying so hard not to stutter this time. And to make sure you were okay. Well if you want to thank me for beating the crap out of him, then you're welcome. I hope you're feeling better for as well, he chuckled. Now, if you'll excuse me, I want to sleep. Oh my I hope I'm not interrupting something, said a voice by the door. It was the first time the group noticed Amari of the Sand in their presence. As a matter of fact, you are. You're interrupting my sleep. They let you out of interrogation already, Tamari-chan. Smirked the Jinchuriki from his bed. She ignored the blatant use of the familiar honorific, we didn't have very much useful information. Apparently, my father has been dead for several weeks at the hands of Arachimaru, she sneered name of her father's killer. We were manipulated into joining this invasion. Wait. Your father was at the Chunin exams yesterday. Sakura said rather loudly. It was Naruto that answered. That was Arachimaru in disguise. He wanted another chance to take out his sensei. Wait how do you know that? She asked. Iro Senen knew about the invasion for a while. That's why we were so prepared. Jonin's we ready to fight off the other sand and sound Jonin's. Iro Senen would help Jiji with Arachimaru while Sasuke incapacitates Gara, and I take out the Odo army and Arachimaru snake summons, he answered. Iro Senen. Tamari raised an eyebrow in amusement. He's Arachimaru's former teammate and Jiji's student. But you know him better as Jureya of the Sanin. Naruto shows some respect. Sakura screamed. 
He's one of the most powerful ninjas in the world, don't call them that. Naruto ignored her command, you know those porno books Kakashi Sensei always reads. Jiraiya wrote them. He gets inspiration for those books by peeking on women in the hot springs. He's also known as the Toad Sage. Therefore, he is Iro Senen. Sakura's face went red with rage at the rather perverse actions of one of Konoha's finest. Anyway, was there something you wanted Tamari-chan? He grinned as Atamari's eyebrow started to twitch. There was a brief moment of uncertainty in her eyes until she stowed them away. No. It can wait until you're out of the hospital, she said walking out of the room. Well, that was fun, but I start training again tomorrow, so I'd appreciate it if you guys can let me get some sleep until then. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Good night, he said completely disregarding the fact that it actually the middle of the afternoon. Hello, Sasu-kun. How are you today? Asked the elder Hokage. I'm doing okay, he said sitting down in the chair in front of the Hokage. I assume there is something you wanted to talk to me about. A saddened look appeared on the Hokage's face, yes. There is something I wish to tell you. I have made many, many mistakes in my life. One of them was keeping secrets from your teammate Naruto. You mean he didn't know about the Kai Ubi? I see he's told you of his burden yes, until the day of your academy graduation, Naruto had no idea of his burden. All his life, he's been hated and shunned, but have never known why. Perhaps if I had been more truthful with him, it would have lessened the pain. Sasu grunted in agreement. But what does this have to do with me? I have called you here today because I do not wish to make the same mistake I made with Naruto-kun with you as well, it seemed like the elder Hokage was growing older and older by the second. Sasuke's eyes widened, what secret have you been keeping from me? Yesterday, trusted member of our council was found to have committed very treasonous acts against our village. Not only did he implant the cells of our Shadame into himself, he also implanted eleven Sharingan eyes. Those eyes came from the dead bodies of your clansmen after the massacre. What? Where is he? I'll kill him. Sasuke screamed as he got out of her seat. Sasuke, you have to learn that violence and vengeance isn't always the answer, the Hokage sternly said. But he killed desecrated the bodies of my clan. I bet some of those eyes he took were my own father's. You can't keep giving in to the urge for vengeance. And besides, Danzo was executed a few hours ago. Sasuke sat down after hearing that Danzo was already dead. So is this the big secret that you've been trying to tell me? Yes, but that is only part of it. The secret I'm going to tell you today is the truth behind the Ichiha massacre, the Hokage grimaced. The truth behind the massacre? Sasuke was almost afraid to ask. Yes. Danzo has always disagreed with the way the village has been run by all four of our great cages especially me. He's been trying to get my job for several decades. In fact, the only way Orochimaru could have gotten into this village undetected would be if he had help. Danzo knew that my wayward student wouldn't let an opportunity to kill me go to waste. Therefore, if Orochimaru had succeeded with this invasion, Kanoha would be in ruins and without a Hokage, Danzo would have immediately put his name into contention for the title and have blamed the failure to push back the Odo and Suna forces on the teachings of my senseis and I, the Elder Cage spoke. Under such circumstance, it would have been all too easy to gain the title. I get it. He's a power-hungry warmonger. But what does this have to do with the massacre? It turns out this wasn't his first V for power. Are you saying the Ichiha massacre was another of his power schemes? The last loyal Ichiha nearly screamed. The Hokage decided some background was needed. What do you know about the Kaiubi attack nearly 13 years ago? Sasuke furrowed his eyebrows. He wasn't sure what Naruto's burden had to do with his clan. Not much. The Kaiubi attacked the village, and many died. The Yandame fought the Kaiubi and died sealing it into Naruto. Yes, that is the generalized version of it, Siratobi nodded. But what isn't known by many is the fact that the Kaiubi was compelled into attacking our village. What could possibly control the Kaiubi? Sasuke asked. There are only a few known things that can control the most powerful of all Baijus. Two of them originate from Kanoha. The first is the Shadai's Mokuten ability that could suppress its power. The second is the Manjekyo Sharingan. The Manjekyo can control the Kaiubi. Yes. It was your ancestor Ichiha Madara who first controlled the Kaiubi and used it to fight the Shadai, Siratobi answered. Naturally, the Ichiha were thought to have possibly been behind the attack. It was the logical conclusion seeing as there were many powerful Sharingan users in the village, and it was not impossible for one of them to be hiding the Manjekyo. After all, no one knew your brother had it before he did his deed. So my clan was blamed for the Kaiubi. Sasu clenched his fists. Not necessarily. There was never concrete proof that someone from your clan actually did the deed, but Danzo definitely put it in the thoughts of many of our villagers and ninja. As a result, people were wary of your clan, but of course they never took any direct action against your clan, seeing as they had your teammate to take their anger on, he spoke in a saddened voice. So while well, there was no concrete proof that your clan was behind the Kaiubi, Danzo was sure your clan was somehow behind it. 
he saw it as a sign that perhaps the Uchiha were not happy with their position in the village and wanted more power. So he influenced many ninja and civilians on the council to enact certain measure to try to keep an eye on your clan. Among them were creating a clan compound that was far away from the village and tighter restrictions on the Uchiha police force to keep an eye on all your ninjas. Your father and your clan elders hated being left out of the loop and felt that the village was trying to suffocate them. And in a way, they were right because Danzo began to whisper in the right ears and pushed the right buttons to suppress your clan. Eventually, this all came to a head a few days before the massacre occurred. Your entire clan had finally had enough of the treatment Danzo, the ninja, and the civilians had brought on them, so they planned a coup d'etat. That's a lie. My family would never rebel against the village. Sasuke yelled. I'm afraid that it is true. In fact, it was likely Danzo's plan from the very beginning. In the background, he had always kept his root Anbu strong, even though I had long ago told him to disband his ninja. Should your clan have rebelled, the village would have been thrown into chaos and civil war. Using fact that I allowed the civil war to occur, he would have sufficient reason to try and impeach me from my seat, and using his root operatives, he would have been able to put down the coup and easily declare himself the fifth Hokage. But Itachi wouldn't let that happen. He knew that if your clan was allowed to go through with the coup, it would mean the start of the fourth shinobi world war. He knew that if Kanoha the strongest of the five great villages dissolved into civil war it would be an open invitation for the other four great villages to attack us. He wasn't going to let your clan start another world war for the sake of power. And he wasn't going to let your clan ruin their name in the name of a coup, so he did the only thing that could possibly preserve your clan's reputation without sending the world into chaos and death. He took matters into his own hands. Itachi killed our clan members because he didn't want our clan to cause a world war. Sasuke wasn't sure what he thought that. That and he didn't want the clan to forever be known as the clan that tried a coup and ended up destroying the entire shinobi world with it. He also knew that should the rebellion have gone off, Danzo would have easily been able to take over the Hokage title and lead the village into ruin. So in order to preserve your clan's reputation and to save the village, he sacrificed his own freedom and his own humanity to massacre his own clan, Siratobi finished. By now, Sasuke was in tears. Then why did he leave me alive? Because he loved you more than anything else. No matter what, he couldn't allow himself to kill his own brother. So he resolved to give you everything so you could rebuild the Ichiha clan and save them from their dark past. He told you to hate him so you would have a reason to grow stronger. I believe this would have two purposes. First, it would allow him to atone for his sins against your clan. Only an Ichiha should have the ability to lay down the punishment upon the Ichiha clan killer and second, it would provide you with a noble legacy to continue the Ichiha name under. By bringing him down, you would easily become one of the most celebrated heroes of Konoha. Itachi sought to bury the Ichiha clan's misdeeds under his supposed betrayal and your heroism. Right after he subjected you to Tsukiyomi, he came to me and begged me to watch over you, to never tell you the truth, and to protect you from Danzo. He knew that by ending the coup before it even began, he had destroyed Danzo's plans and as a result would draw his fury and ire. The only way to get back at Itachi now that he was a fugitive on the run was through you. But Itachi was mistaken as Danzo was able to salvage the situation by collecting all the Sharingan eyes from your dead clansmen, including the Manjekyo Sharingan eye of Itachi's best friend Shisui. It was a long time before anyone spoke again. Why did you decide to tell me? Itachi didn't want me to know so why tell me? The last Ichiha finally asked with tears in his eyes. I made the mistake of not telling Naruto his burden until it was too late. Doing this caused him to suffer far more than he needed to. I won't make that mistake again. I tell you this now because I hope to save both you and your brother pain. Your brother most likely wishes to die by your hand to atone for his sins. And I can't let you dream of killing your brother without knowing why he did what he did. You both have suffered far too much at the hands of Danzo for me too in good conscience, let you continue to suffer. Is it true that you stopped an entire army on your own Naruto-kun? A.M. asked. Naruto had just been released from the hospital so naturally, he went to get some ramen in order to rid his taste buds of the taste of the evil, evil hospital food. Yup. I'm awesome like that. Naruto grinned finishing his sixth bowl of the food of the gods. And later today, I start training with the Nidame. A.M. had to giggle at that. Her little brother who had been hated throughout the village had finally begun to gain some recognition around town. I knew you had it in you. Indeed. You are something of an enigma Yuzumaki Naruto a voice said entering the Raymond stand sitting down next to Naruto. One bowl of Maizo Raymond please. You know Tamari-chan you seem to be following me around quite a bit. Are you perhaps stalking me? The Jinchuriki teased picking up his seventh bowl. Don't flatter yourself. I simply have some questions I need you to answer, the Suna princess answered without missing a beat. Neither said anything as they waited for Tamari's order to arrive. Why? She finally asked. Naruto simply raised an eyebrow at her and waited for her to continue. I know what you did during the invasion. 
and I have a pretty good idea of how you attain such power. My question is why aren't you like my brother? Was it because you weren't hated? Was it because people liked you? Was it because people respected you? Why? She sounded almost desperate to know the answer. As I understood it, I lucked out quite a bit. Your brother's seal was rather faulty. It allowed his biju to influence him making him think that it was your mother. My seal was done by the Yandame Hokage perhaps, the greatest seal master to ever exist, he spoke the last part with pride. He decided not to mention how his seal excluded Karama's yin chakra at first. So, it was just the nature of the seals used? She asked. No, part of the reason why I didn't lose myself to the hate the villagers put on me was because I found people who truly cared for me, he said. He thought of his sacrifice to save his own life, Jiji, and even Aruka sensei People who cared. Yeah. The one time I almost gave in to my anger and hate, I remembered those who cared for me. Your brother needs to know that he still has you and your brother there for him. The Mari's eyes widened at that. I know that you still care for him even if you are afraid of him. You can't give up on him. You need to talk to him and show him that you care. I know you think you've failed him, and that's why you are compelled to ask me why I didn't turn out like him. The Mari's silence was all Naruto needed to know that he had figured out her entire agenda. Once he wakes up from his nap, be there to explain everything to him, and if that should fail, send him to me. I'll set him straight, he grinned. I'm not going to say thank you especially not after you knocked me out during the invasion. In fact, you owe me a match, Mr. Kamikaze. Divine wind, huh? Naruto smiled. Is that what my nickname is in the bingo books? Apparently, Odo has you down as Kano has Kamikaze they figured only through divine intervention could Odo have failed in that invasion. What about your Suna's bingo book? Well, seeing as we were deceived for a long time, we are probably going to renegotiate a treaty with your village. So, there's no need to put your name in ours. As for the other major villages, they probably won't even glance your way until you run into them. Why's that? Quite frankly, no one expects anything at all from a brand new village like Odo. They'll think it was rather foolish and ambitious of them to think they could topple Konoha especially if a genin took out the majority of the army. Kiri, Tsuchi, and Kumo will probably just scoff at the fact that you took out an army. They'll downplay it as Odo being as stupid for trying to invade Konoha and weak for failing so miserably. Furthermore, you didn't actually fight any of Suna's finest, so you'll get no respect for many of the major villages. Ouch. No love because I didn't take out any good ninja. Oh well, it's not like I need any more attention drawn to me. By the way, I'm a Chuna now. You got promoted. Tamari raised an eyebrow. I don't see a flak jacket. I better have. None of the genin would have stood a chance against me. I should get it the next time I go to Jiji's office. A little arrogant aren't you? It's not arrogant if it's true, he said finishing his last bowl of ramen. Well, I've got to get back to training. See you, Tamari-chan. Don't call me that. She cried watching her fellow blonde get off his seat and walk away without even glancing back at her. As she watched him walk away, she couldn't help but think about how much the last few days had changed her life. Her village and another had tried to invade another. Her father had been manipulated, killed, and used. And her younger brother was sleeping for the first time in his life. She also thought about how one blonde knucklehead had, here you go young lady. The bill. The cheerful old Raymond chef snapped her out of her thoughts. Thanks, she said taking out her money until she noticed something peculiar about the offending piece of paper. Wait. How could one bowl of Raymond cost this much? Oh. You were eating with Naruto-kun. Since he left first, I assumed he left you the bill to pay for, he simply said. He ate 23 bowls. Damari's eyes bugged out at that. How could he have eaten that many bowls? How could she not have noticed him eating that many bowls? And he left the bill for her. Naruto. She screamed. Naruto had to smirk. Kakashi had taught him the art of skipping out on the bill. As he saw the waterfall of training ground 16, he couldn't help but wonder what the Nidame had in store for him. Hopefully, he could learn how to get a better grasp on water manipulation. As he walked over to the waterfall, he noticed that the Nidame was missing. In his place was his brother the Shadai. And next to him was an Anbu with brown hair. Um I thought I was supposed to be training with your brother today? Naruto asked. Yes well, it turns out Hiruzen needed some help with the administration of the village. Things haven't been easy since it was found out that Danzo was a traitor. So either my brother or I would go help him, Shadai gave a nervous chuckle. You don't like politics do you? Naruto stated. And you simply left it all to him didn't you? The man who was thought to have been the greatest ninja to ever live, simply bowed his head and sighed, my brother was always the no-nonsense type, serious type. Politics and administration was always right up his alley. So who is this guy? Oh, right. I haven't introduced you guys yet. This is Tenzo. He is going to help in your training with the Kaiubi, the Senju founder explained. He's going to help me. How? One of the reasons why Arachimaru ran from this village was because of some of the experiments he did on children. 
one of those experiments was implanting some of my cells into these kidnapped children, trying to get one or more of them to gain my power of Mokuten. Only one child survived, and this is him Tenzo. But for this mission and his hand in training you, he'll be known as Yamato. It's nice to finally meet you, Yuzumaki-san, the masked Anbu introduced himself taking his mask off. He offered his hand to Naruto. Accepting the offered hand, it's nice to meet you too. How is this going to work then? Well according to you, the Kaiubi is able to freely give you as much power as you need. So, we are going to let you try to draw on as much power from the Kaiubi as possible. The object of this exercise is to see how much of its chakra you can take on before losing control of yourself. When you lose control, Yamato and I will be there to suppress you, the shot I stated. And you think this will eventually allow me to completely master Kurama's chakra? Naruto questioned. In theory it should. From Jiraiya's information on the current Jinchuriki, the number of tails your Bijuu have the harder it'll be to control. Each tail basically represents a new level of control you'll have to attain. Usually, your Bijuu would fight you for control, but since that is not the case, that should make things slightly easier. Okay. Sounds good. Let's get started, Naruto said getting into the lotus position. Karama are you ready? I'm always ready kid. I, myself, am interested to see how well you can control my power, Karama stated. There won't be any surprises, right? Maybe Naruto could practically feel the nine tails grinning. Naruto decided to ignore his partner's vague answer in favor of meditation. After several moments of concentration, a red cloak began to envelop Naruto. Behind him, one menacing tail started to form. That's right Naruto. Keep going. Try to draw on as much of his chakra while staying in control. Nodding, Naruto continued to draw on even more power. He reached down into his subconscious to get to Kurama's. When he brushed against Kurama's own mind, he felt an enormous rush of power and a second tail. Well, that wasn't so hard. That's it Naruto. Keep going, don't be afraid to go as far as you possibly can, the shot I encouraged. Naruto simply nodded telling his sensei's present that he was going to proceed. But actually making progress was very difficult. He wasn't sure why it was suddenly so much harder to get another tail. The first two tails had been relatively easy. He knew that each tail of control would be progressively more difficult, but that didn't explain why the third tail's difficulty level far exceeded that of the first two. Was there something special about the third tail? There probably was and Kurama was being all snotty and secretive about it. Naruto mentally gave a sigh as he continued to probe Kurama's chakra to gain access to the next level of control. Outside of his mind, both the Shadai and Yamato were beginning to worry. The first two tails had come to Naruto, rather quickly which wasn't surprising, since he and the Kaiubi were on pretty decent terms with each other, to say the least but this third tail was taking quite a while, which meant one thing. If Naruto were to attain this third tail of control, it would likely provide a rather large boost in power. So, both of them began make preparations. Each summoning Mokuten vines around Naruto at the ready. It wasn't until minutes later that Naruto had finally been able to breach Kurama's consciousness and what he felt was indescribable. The rush of power was absolutely intoxicating. He had never felt anything like it. It felt as if he could do anything in the world. It was the Shadai's voice that brought him out of his hazy trance. Naruto. Naruto. You're losing control. Focus. Don't let the chakra control you. Control it instead. And he was indeed starting to lose control. As his third tail took shape, his chakra became far more volatile. The ground underneath him began to melt when it came in contact with Kurama's chakra. At this, Naruto reeled in his feeling of power. If getting to the third tail was hard, maintaining its power was damn near impossible. Holding such power back and trying to control it was probably the hardest thing Naruto had ever done. It was taking every last ounce of willpower he had to maintain and control. Eventually, Naruto was able to stabilize the third tail. Once he was able to hold all of it back, he felt incredibly calm and serene. It wasn't the adrenaline rush of being all-powerful, but it felt amazing nonetheless. That feeling of calm was the last thing he felt as he fell into unconsciousness. Hours later, Naruto woke completely exhausted and aching everywhere. It wasn't as bad as after the invasion, but it was still pretty bad. As he looked around, he noticed that that sun had begun to set and that he was leaning against the side of a rather large tree. Yamato and the Shadai probably propped him up on the tree to let him rest. Ah. It seems you've awoken. How are you feeling? Yamato asked. I'm okay for the most part. I'm pretty sore. Do you have any idea what happened when I went into three-tail form? It seems that three-tail form possess far greater power than the first two-tail forms. Your chakra was rather tame during those two forms, but your third form was basically uncontrollable. Why though, we have no idea, the Senju answered. Well then, I'd better ask my tenant. You got anything to say Kurama? The last part of it directed toward his partner in crime. Use my chakra to do that jutsu your father copied from my Bijuadama tailed beast bomb, was all he got as a reply. 
Dutsu copied from the Bijuadama. The Rasengan. Why that one? It seemed Kurama was enjoying keeping secrets from him, so the only way to get answers would be to follow his instructions no matter how sure he was that it'd likely end up badly. Hauling upon Kurama's chakra, he prepared one of his father's signature jutsu. He felt rather proud to be able to use such an infamous jutsu. As far as he knew, this jutsu still struck fear into the hearts of Iwa Shinobi. Good thing Iwa was a little too arrogant to care that Odo had put him in their bingo book as an Aarank Genin. As the shining orb the Rasengan was known for started to form, he noticed something shocking. A normal Rasengan was a bright crystal clear blue. Using Kurama's chakra, it came out an angry blood red. When he first began learning the jutsu, he had to use a shadow clone to help him control its amazing destructive power. But over time, his chakra control had gotten far better allowing him to use the shining ball of destruction with only one hand. But in his hand at the current moment wasn't an ordinary ball of destruction, this one was several times more destructive and several times harder to control. Before Naruto could even react, his Kaiubi empowered Rasengan blew up in his face. The resulting explosion sent him flying backward several feet, making quite a dent in a tree he had hit. Hashirama and Yamato had barely been able to use Mokuten. Makujaheki would release. Wood lock wall to protect themselves from the blast. Grama. What the fuck was that? Naruto groaned. In his head, he could hear the fearsome Kaiubi laughing beyond compare. Of course, Kurama would derive pleasure from his pain. After the laughing had died down, Kurama began to explain, do you remember when I said each biju offered its jinchuriki different powers? Yeah. You hinted that you might have had a few more powers besides chakra regeneration. I'm guessing that that weird red Rasengan was another one of them. He guessed. Yes. As the strongest of the nine biju, I have inherited some of my father's most prized powers. I and as a result, you have inherited my father's ability to use Yun Release and Yang Release. At the three-tailed state, you unlock the power to use Yun Release. As you learn to control more of my tails, your control over that power will increase greatly. At six tails, you will unlock Yang Release. And at nine tails, I can learn Yin Yang Release Naruto finished for him. When he had heard from Kurama that his father, the Rakuto Senen, had created physical bodies for him and his Biju siblings out of thin air using Yin Yang Release, it sounded unbelievable. Naruto couldn't believe it. But the possibility of having the same power as the god of shinobi was making him absolutely giddy. Unfortunately, Kurama's rather boisterous laughter broke him out of his thoughts. As if you could have yin yang release. No. Neither you nor I can use the power of god. I am not the Juubi and you do not possess the Rinnegan. No at nine tails, I will be able to physically manifest myself through your body. Naruto really didn't like getting his hopes shot down like that. Tsk. Whatever. What does yin release do anyway? Yin release is the spiritual energy that governs imagination. It can be used to create form out of nothing. You mean I can create stuff out of thin air? Once again Naruto was getting pretty giddy. Yes. With yin release you can create inanimate objects out of nowhere. But yin release covers a broad range of abilities. Among them is the illusion creating ability you humans call Jinjutsu and Irio Ninjutsu Medical Ninjutsu. You mean I can learn Jinjutsu and Medical Ninjutsu? That giddy feeling was growing. No, you will probably never be able to use Yun Release for anything outside of creating objects and jutsu like the Rasengan and your clones. Why not? Naruto whined. He was rather looking forward to learning those branches of jutsu. It's the same reason why you never could do a simple Bushin jutsu. You mean I have too much chakra? Naruto asked. No. I mean I have too much chakra. Because my chakra reserves are higher than anything you could possibly imagine, there's no way you could possibly ever have enough chakra control to do jinjutsu or medical ninjutsu using my chakra. So, there's no way I could possibly learn either of the two. As you gain more control over my tails, you may perhaps be able to start using your own chakra for yun release and not my own. But by then, your chakra reserves would have also increased greatly, and then you would be in this exact situation again too much chakra and not enough control. Ironically, because I and eventually you have so much chakra, creating inanimate objects will actually come very easily to you. Also, I believe Yun Release will help increase the raw destructive power of the Rasengan and make your cage bushin vastly more durable. And that's pretty awesome. I can't wait to try and master this. Creating inanimate objects and increasing the power of his Rasengan and cage bushin wasn't a bad deal at all. I don't suppose you know any Yin chakra control exercises, do you? As if I have need of such things. No. I was born with this power so there was never any need for me to learn to control it. All I know is that your control over yin release will grow as you gain control over more of my tails. Any other ways to increase your control in the meantime will have two of your own doing. Satisfied with the knowledge bestowed upon him, Naruto nodded. Alright. Thanks for the help Karama. Whatever, kid. The powers I have gifted you are incredible, you'd better not waste them. 
After his conversation with Kurama, Naruto told the Shadai and Yamato about his newfound ability for Yun release. Needless to say, both were shocked. This new development would have to be discussed with Siratobi. But the injuries Naruto sustained from the Yun release Rasengan and the aching he experienced from control Kurama's three-tailed state, it looked like Naruto would be spending another night in the hospital much to his chagrin. Fortunately or unfortunately whichever way you look at it his broody teammate came by to drop off his chunin flak jacket. How the hell can you be back in the hospital after leaving it this morning? The Achiha mock throwing the jacket to his blonde teammate in bed, not caring that he may have been injured. I might have overdone it with my training. I discovered a new ability that's probably going to change my training regime quite a bit. DSK. Only you, dope. For a while, neither said anything. But from Naruto's point of view, he could see that something was troubling his teammate. So he simply waited for his friend to say something. Have you ever felt like your entire life was a lie? Sasuke began. Yes. Twice, in fact. Once when I found out I was the Jinchuriki of the Kaiubi and another time about a month ago. Another moment of silence occurred until the last loyal Achiha spoke again. I found out today that my brother massacred my clan because the Achiha were planning a coup d'etat. He knew that an Achiha rebellion would cause civil war in Konoha and likely entice one of the other four great villages to attack us thus, causing the fourth shinobi world war. So to save the world from much unneeded bloodshed and to save our clan name, he took it upon himself to kill our entire clan. But no matter what happened, he couldn't kill me. Apparently, he loved me far too much kill me. My brother now wants me to kill him so I can bring justice down upon the Achiha killer at this point, Naruto could see that Sasuke was very confused. Sasuke had trusted him with one of his greatest secrets, perhaps it was time to return the favor. My father is the Yandame Hokage, Namak is Minato, the same man that sealed the Kaiubi inside of me. Sasuke's eyes widened at that. That was not something he was expecting. When he thought about it though, it made sense why Naruto was chosen as the Jinchuriki and not someone else. Kami must really hate us. Perhaps. It was probably true. They both had terrible luck. So what are you going to do now? I don't honestly know. My life had purpose before. It was meant to kill Itachi so I could finally avenge my clan. Now, I don't know what it is that I want to do. Naruto could tell that he truly was lost. Perhaps, that was why Sasuke sought him out for suggestions. You won't know until you face your brother again, Naruto said with finality. Get stronger. Get strong enough so you can finally look in your brother's face as his equal. When you do face him, keep your mind open and listen to what he says, and just do whatever your heart says for you to do. Nothing needed to be said as the two newly minted Chunin looked back on how their lives had changed so much in the last month. They were interrupted by two rather loud feminine squeals. Sasuke-kun. Sakura and Ino both screamed rushing into the room, nearly breaking the door down. Naruto had to smirk at Sasuke's situation. He could literally see a tick mark appearing on the Ichiha's forehead. The joys of fangirls. Sasuke-kun. I heard you got promoted to Chunin. I knew you could do it. You're totally the strongest Chunin in the world. Ino giggled. One month ago, Naruto would have taken exception with that comment. But now, he found himself rather amused by Ino's declaration. It was rather funny to see her delude herself. He chuckled to himself as he simply locked eyes with Sasuke and raised an eyebrow. Seeing Mount Sasuke erupt from irritation and anger was also amusing. Surprisingly, it was Sakura who was the voice of reason and defused the situation. Actually you know, I think Naruto was the strongest genin at the exams. What? No way. Yeah, Naruto's definitely up there now. I saw how fast and strong he was when he beat Niji. But Sasuke-kun learned Kakashi's most prized technique. The Chidori. That totally means Ino rambled. DSK. The Dobe also knows the technique, the Achiha grunted. What? You know it too Naruto. Ino asked incredulously. Finger pointing abounded. How come you didn't use it then? Better yet, how did you learn it as well? The Dobe knows it because Kakashi taught it to the both of us. And as for why he didn't use it. That's pretty obvious. He didn't need it, answered Sasuke. That was probably the most words he had ever spoken to Ino so far in his entire life. Also, only one of us in this room is in the bingo books as an airank threat. This news positively shocked Ino. She couldn't believe it. Naruto the class dope was actually in the bingo books. She looked to Sakura for confirmation. The pinket gave her a tight nod, Naruto defeated the entire Odo army on his own Ino. In Odo's bingo book, they are calling him Kanoha's Kamikaze or Divine Wind. She then looked at Naruto in hospital gown and all in awe. He even had a cool nickname as well. Naruto chuckled, put his hands behind his head, and leaned back on his bed. The story is that it is only through my divine intervention that the invasion failed. Although, it was rather arrogant for them to believe that their invasion was going to work anyway. Naruto simply gave Ino an amused smile as she squirmed under his gaze. For a while, no one said anything. Once again, it was Sakura who broke the silence. 
Naruto if you don't mind me asking how did you get so strong? Sakura asked in a timid voice. Naruto wasn't sure if he should answer that question. Just look at her and how she asked that question, it was quite clear that Sakura was feeling very self-conscious about her skills as a ninja. Both her teammates had far surpassed even her wildest imaginations. They had shown great performances at the Chunin exam finals and had done a great service to the village for their part in the invasion. All the while, she hadn't even made it out of the preliminaries and had served no purpose in the defense of Konoha other than helping move straggling civilians. Inadequate indeed. Naruto sighed. This wasn't going to be an easy conversation to have. The encounter with Orochimaru in the Forest of Death really changed my mindset of why I became a ninja. Tell me Sakura why do you want to be a ninja? If it's to impress your precious Asukun, then you should probably quit now. The three of us nearly died in the Forest of Death, Sakura. If that doesn't teach you about the horrors and rigors of being a ninja, then I don't know what will. People die in this profession Sakura. And if you ever hope to progress your career, you'll be expected to kill people as well. Hey. That's not fair. You can't just trample on Sakura's Eno try to stand up for her friend. No. Naruto is right. If you don't have a good reason to be a ninja, then there's no way you can withstand the challenges that come with our lifestyle, the Ichiha interrupted. Oh yeah. What are your reasons for being a ninja? She demanded. It was rather surprising that she would yell at her precious Asu come like that, but the two new Chunin suspected it was because her reasons for being a ninja were at least in some part similar to Sakura's. She probably didn't appreciate her reasons for being a ninja to be seen as foolish either. I'm a ninja because of what happened to my family. I strive to get stronger in order to finally find closure with what happened to my family, the Ichiha stated. I am a ninja because of the sacrifices made so I could be here today, Naruto thought back to his parents. And I strive to get stronger to make those who care about me proud. One day, I will surpass all the Hokages of this village, he said a little glassy-eyed. You don't want to be Hokage anymore? Sakura questioned. Naruto used to scream to the world that he wanted Hokage, but now, I don't know if I could ever be a Hokage for this village after everything that's happened to me in my life. We'll see in a few years, he answered. Sakura and Ino both looked shocked at how quickly and how much Naruto had changed. The Naruto a month ago was a totally different person from the one sitting in front of them today. Perhaps, it was time they did some soul searching and changing as well. Soon, the nurse came to tell Naruto's guests that visiting hours were over. As each guest left the room they all pondered over the words spoken within that room. Ino and Sakura began to truly question their reasons and drive to be a ninja, while Sasuke thought about what he would say to his brother when they would meet again. Naruto, on the other hand, though about why he was training so hard. He didn't want their sacrifice in vain, and he wanted to make them proud by surpassing all their expectations. Thinking back to today's development and the discovery of his new yin release power, he knew he probably should change his training regime. Water manipulation training would have to wait. Exploring the possibilities of yin release was a far more intriguing task than Suetin at the moment. Naruto thought back to the applications of yin release from Kurama. If he was going to use yin release to take the Rasengan to a new level and pay homage to his father, then he damn sure was going to pay homage to his mother as well. And I know exactly how to do it. He grinned. What if Naruto is brutal in the Chunin exams, thanks for watching my video till the end if you enjoy this content, then do consider subscribing to my channel, and leave a like if you guys need the next part, comment down, and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.